Here we go. We're going to review tonight. We're going to cover the three topics that we've worked on for the past couple of weeks. We're going to review law. Then we're going to review contracts. And then agency. And we're going to do a little different on our review tonight. We're going to do a fast round of questions. Then we're going to play a game. And then we're going to do a case study. So, if you all are ready, let's go. That's what we're going to do right there. Third parts case study. That's fun. All of this stuff is on the internet. It's, I've got a YouTube channel, Steve McTeer, that's all there. You can go to our website, New Location Realty, and click on the videos there. On that, you can get all the videos, you can get the PowerPoints, I've got questions, answers, and links to other study aids for you to do. Ready? I'll just call out your answers. Here we go, lightning round. Protect, protect the public. public. Protect the public. What else do they do? Require a license to make sure the person is qualified. Yes. The agent is qualified. What else? To regulate businesses. Does it? Does regulate it business. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. How many commissioners? Nine. Nine. What do we need to know about them? Yeah, one black. <laughs> They're required to be. Uh, they they have to be property uh, property owners. Yes. Okay. Um, Second one. That's one. What else? You know, they serve for two terms, which would be ten years. Can that serve for two terms. Mm -hmm. They okay. get three hundred dollars a month. Three hundred dollars a month. Big money. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Let's look through some of this. Who appoints the commissioners? The governor. The governor. The governor. And who confirms them? The Senate. The Senate. Seven? I'm, I'm not sure. Wow. Eight? Well, yes, thank you. Because one Eight. is just... One does not have a real estate license. That's a consumer advocate. They're one of those at-large members. Oh, and there's at-large. We have one. How many others? I'm sure. Tamara gave us one a minute ago. Uh, three. Two. 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 Tamara, you said a, a black, a black that's at large, <laughs> rotates around the, yeah. uh, the congressional districts, and our consumer advocate mm -hmm. was uh, the other at large. Uh, 21. 21. 21, thank you, yes. Now, it'd be tough to be a cons uh, commissioner at 21. You better know somebody. <laughs> <laughs> The broker is the senior person. The qualifying broker is that the senior person on the team. They're the ones that's responsible for all of the um, agents, licensees that, that work out their the, That broker has what kind of name in front of it? Qualifying, qualifying. qualifying broker. Thank you. Now this says broker. What is a? How, how did he get there? How did they get that little title says broker? What did they do? Take they had to take the out of thirty-six months. How long? 24 months out of 36. 36? Yes, thank you. They had to have been a licensee. Then they had to have um, um, taken their broker's yes. class and become licensed as Passed a broker. It. So that's another 60 hours. Right. Okay. And it had to be 21. Yeah, it had to be 21. Mm -hmm. A couple of little things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How about an associate broker? Who is Works that? Under, under the qualifying broker. <laughs> that's a person a who's done what? They, they're a broker, but they're still working on their own broker. They did these other things y'all just said, mm -hmm. but they chose to what? To be an associate broker. To, to stay under okay. a under oh, qualifying, qualifying broker. Okay. Yes. Great. So who is the qualifying broker? Um, responsible, responsible for all the licenses. 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 Responsible for all the licenses. Do y'all remember what his, his primary responsibility is? Is that all the Super Everyone there heard it. Supervise agent. Thank you, Vanessa. Right, thank you. I'm actually not agent. Uh, the qualifying broker is also the person who made the application for the company license. Mm -hmm. right. And then they're also the one that's on the the accounts. The, yes. The trust yes. Account. Their name has Correct. to be on the trust account. Oh, they're the ones have to be on that account. 
I wasn't sure what that was. <laughs> the company so, could be a realty company. Um, however many you want to have, but they all got to have that same broker. Well, we're, we're a licensed license brokerage? Yes, there, that's okay. where we're headed for. Oh, it's going to be a okay. company that engages in the real estate business okay. where you've got a company license and a qualifying broker. Okay. Let me answer this. You've got a company with three salespeople. Mm -hmm. How many licenses do you have? Four. Four. Mm -hmm. Oh, they got you to five. Five. There you go. Because you got to have one for the for the agency, the the for the company, company. Uh, has to have and both then the and then the and then the qualified broker, and, and then, then we had how many salespeople? Three, 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 three more. more. So we got five. Five there. They dinged a lot of people with this question mm -hmm. because you yeah. forget about the company this license. Has to have Okay. Um, and then selling to real estate, doing business. Yes, as yes. Um, um, has completed all the courses, classes, and license now. License. license to be in the business. What's that? Uh, Where's the TV? License to drive. You're going to be licensed to sell. Why would they? <coughs> we got three reasons. Well, well you want to be inactive? Could you could be inactive? Why would you be inactive? You didn't keep up your CEs. Oh yes. Or pay your. Yes. And your, 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 and your. Why else would you be inactive? You just chose to be in You you chose to be the, the, the commission. Yeah, the commission could have I'm reading it all put you on inactive because they've suspended you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Can you do business if you're inactive? No. Yeah, you trying to get a revolt, do you? <laughs> yeah. Who's a licensee? Um. An agent that has passed required. Courses, tests, qualifications. She's all in there. Just <laughs> <laughs> gotta get, just pick them all apart. All of it's in there. That's why we're doing it this way. I don't want to have multiple choice up here. You say, oh, well, let me guess. Right, right. That makes sense. Here you either know it or you don't. <coughs> yeah, that was a good example, Marcel, of the way you just picked it apart. Mm -hmm. October first. September. September thirty first. Correct. Correct. Now, next question is August thirty first. Right now, it's a month ahead. They want you to go ahead and renew the license, pay them the money, and then they give you all of September to finish your CE. Now, what if you don't? What if you don't finish your CE by September thirtieth? You go inactive. Inactive. Automatic. Uh, yeah. 170? 150. Close. 150, yes. Thank you. 150. Um, that's if you don't renew it on the end of August. If you wait till September 5th, saying, well, I gotta have it done by the end of September. Well, you you five days into the hundred and fifty dollar penalty. Mm -hmm. After the about, September, about September 30th. 30th, yes, in yeah. September. And their computer will just kick you out if you have not finished that because they all that's electronic now. Mm -hmm. Rule you can do it in your home. Yes. And in the city. A stay with if, the rule. Okay. You can do it in your home and what else? You just like that step out of your house? At a business? I mean, um, it'll be in, at a business? I mean, if you're disabled? No. Handicapped. Well, in rural, you can operate out of your home if it's just you. You can't have any salespeople okay. there. Oh. You have to have a separate entrance, got to have signage. Separate phone. Supposed to have a separate <laughs> phone. Um, and it's got to be 
Clearly, this is a business office. You don't have your you say, man. You can't have your, you can't have your TV playing and have yeah. something on or Yeah, whatever. Netflix on the uh -huh. background. You just sit in here, somebody walks in. No, that's not what, no. Uh, how about in the city? If you're handicapped. You can do those same things. At home. You can operate out of your home. If not handicapped, what are our rules? You, you have to have a commercial, commercial deal. location. Mm -hmm. Signage, Signage, separate phone line, all those same things. Mm -hmm. Yes, but we can have agents then. Mm -hmm. At the office, at on the site, on, on at the location. Yes. Mm -hmm. How long? Three years. Three, three years. years. Yeah, y'all. I hope y'all get that question. Three years. <laughs> Ooh, we. <laughs> you find a salesperson. Um, agents. A person. Working. Okay, I'm sorry. Y'all call your once. We just go person, work this out. An agent working with a client with Ooh. active license. Client, you read something into this? Okay. Yeah, because they could be a customer. Yeah, well, yeah. Salesperson can just be working as a transaction broker. Mm -hmm. Okay. What we're looking for here is what did they do to become a salesperson? They did what, 60 what, hours. They had to do 60 hour class. Take a and post test. license. Take, take, state test. Take, state take test. and pass a state test. Mm -hmm. What's the state test? Pass grade. 70. 70. That's one of the things we have up on our question parking lot. Was 70 is the passing grade for the state. Our school grade though, got to get 80. Right. Because you need your confidence up there. Right. If you go into this test with just passing hours at a 70, you're kind of walking in like this. I just don't know if I know it or not. But you go in with an 80 and you feel good about it. All right, so our salesperson did the 60 hour course, <laughs> passed the test, and then what did they do? Found a broker. Found a broker. They had to do that within 90 days. 90 days after getting it. They got to uh, make an application for that license, yes. Within 90 days of passing the test. Right. Now, what if they go active right then. How long is their license good for? Six months. Six months. And what have they got to do during that six months? Post six months. months. Take their post That's license. Right. How many hours is that? 30. 30. Wow, y'all come to this so good. My pride of you. What activities require a license? Barn sale. Barn sale. No. Yeah. Yes. Barn sale. Yes. Uh, who can tell me what barn sale is? Buy. Uh huh. Auction. A, uh huh. Well, yeah. A work. A, rent. rent. Negotiate. Yes. Sale. sale. Uh huh. Auction. Auction. Auction or advertising. Lease. Lease. Then you always get the E. That's one of the I'm going to eat the E. Engage. Not engage. No. Oh, no. Um, Not engage. Not <laughs> This is something that uh, you'll probably rarely ever do, but it's called an exchange. Yeah. Yeah. Barn sale. Y'all yeah. go back and work on that because mm. you can bet there's going to be a test question on what you can and cannot do. Ontario the back there shaking her head. Yep. Yep. You know what I mean? That would be good. Not like that, but it is. Yeah. What are our activities that are exempt from the license? Remember the little. Sentence? Oh, my attorney. Uh huh. Oh, has a has 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 as a property manager has, has authority has as authority, a property, as a property manager, manager an apartment manager to, to sell, sell cemetery lots timeshare cemetery lots. <laughs> uh, <laughs> my, my attorney. My all right. Here's here's the word. My, that's my property, my parent, child, spouse, mm -hmm. and remember the rules are going to be tighter if you're dealing with family-owned property. Right. Attorney, he can do attorney duties. You can do an attorney at fact uh, with a power of attorney. Mm -hmm. You have an authority. The sheriff sells uh, foreclosures. He didn't need a license. Mm -hmm. An apartment manager, they don't need a license. Condominium manager, yes because they're dealing with all the different owners. Uh, 
time share, different license, and cemetery lots. You don't have to have a license to sell cemetery lots. So we've got all our people right here that don't need a license. <laughs> you got most of it. <laughs> you have to make sure that they're licensed. Yes. Um, and has taken notified the commission in 10 days. Notified the commission in 10 days. In writing. In, in writing, yes. But also, don't you have to, don't they have to take a, is a, I don't know, that 60, 30, 30 hour? <laughs> no, they don't. Oh, okay. Okay, no. That's the example about the man had the daughter what a house here, but he was in Atlanta. Yeah, I need to go get the monkey and put it okay. on my back. Okay. So okay. y'all see this monkey you're putting on your back mm -hmm. if you do an out-of-state co-brokerage because you are you assuming to, responsibility for them. Yeah, you have their to, actions. You have to be responsible for the house being listed yes. in that state. Yes. Um, How about the earnest money? You have to be the one responsible for mm -hmm. the in-state broker. And then when it's over, else? let the real estate commission know it's yeah. over. Oh, I mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's, you know, there's a lot going on with uh, out-of-state co-brokerage, and the fact that it's used so rarely makes a really good test question. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole lot of things that you can pick apart in this co-brokerage and ask a question about. So be careful. I'm going to say, go back and review this one a couple of more times yeah. before you take the test. Um, you must be 19. 19. You okay. must reside in the state that you're, you have to be a citizen or a... Don't have to be a citizen of this state. state right, but you do have to be a U.S. citizen. Yes. Um, Mary, knocking them out of the park tonight. <laughs> How about education? I you have to have you finished high school uh -huh. or and, GED. And? And? Where you are right now, that you saw the education. Yeah, you got a 60 hour, 60 hour, 60 hour class. Go to school. Oh, yeah. What else? They like people with more than 30 acute issues in the background? No feminists. No feminists. No, no criminals. Yep. How about the broker? Um, 24 of, of 36 months. Right. Um, that's how you did the license 24 the last 36 months, yes. Um, you have to take the broker's course. Yes. Another 60 hours. Um, Would that be the same as two years of the sale? Yes. I mean, yes. Okay. You're to, you could uh, get your salesperson's license when? At 19. 19. 19. So you can yeah. jump in the business, be active for two years. So you've, you've done the two year out of the three. Mm -hmm. Then you can take the course and you can be a broker at 21. Right. How did I say it? How can this happen? I thought you had, because I only had one for each location, you had to have a qualifying broker. Had to have a qualifying broker for each location. There's your key word on this. How can a broker serve for more than one company? If they're all oh, at in the, the same location. address. Yes, same location. <coughs> like right here, uh, I could be the qualifying broker for 50 companies mm -hmm. as long as they've got this address and they all sign off saying we know he's being the broker for other companies mm -hmm. and then we submit that paper to the Real Estate Commission. So what did you say, Tamara? What was your answer? That they have to be under the, the same address. Same address, okay. same address. Okay. yes. Same address. Now, if, say, we wanted to open a branch across the street, what have we got to do? Another broker, another company license, mm -hmm. uh, and then we'll have to have salespeople over there. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's going to be a discount brokerage over there. Mm -hmm. We don't want that here, because we're full service, full price. <laughs> <laughs> How long Two is years. your license period? Two years. Two years. Do you remember when it uh, renews? Even or odd? Even. 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 So uh, next year in 2020, in fact right now we are, um, this is the first week of October, everybody had this been the year to renew, you would have had to had it all done 
find out or you, you're not licensed. Uh, mm, right. Uh -huh. um, had this been 2020 instead of 19. Mm -hmm. right. So next year, y'all won't have to worry about it because why? We will only be a year in. We won't be quite a year in. But your first CE is covered by your education. I mean, covered by your your renewal. After you get your license, what have you got to do? Got to do your post license. 30, yeah, post license. Your post license will count okay. as your CE for that first okay. renewal period. Right. Okay. Then from in 2022, you will need to do some more. We're going to get to those in a second. Way. How much is it per year? It's eighty dollars. Eighty-five dollars. Eighty-five okay. dollars. So That's what you said. Don't get confused. Yeah, don't it's get confused. Eighty-five with per year. The renewal is twice that. Yes. So, okay. Yes, and they'll they'll is give you. Yeah. That so that's one seventy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, they will give you the opportunity. Yeah, they'll have uh, eighty-five dollars a year. And then the brokers ninety five dollars a year, mm -hmm. and then they'll double for the sale and double for the broker. So they'll give you four really good looking numbers. Mm -hmm. And awesome. you'll say, Pixie. Uh, Twenty. Fifteen. Fifteen, 15 hours. 15. What do they include? Risk management one and two. One and two. And then three of them. Three electives. I suggest you do something that's going to help you. Mm -hmm. uh, take a contracts class, a negotiating class, something that's going to push you forward. Mm -hmm. Is there an exam? No. No. No in a live class. Why? Because it's proctor. What? What? Because we know you're here, <laughs> and you're participating and answering questions, and we know you're here. I like in our. Uh, post license class at the end of that we don't do a test we do a project right, right, right. and you'll all like uh, you'll do a listing presentation to the class <laughs> that you passed but if you were doing it online you don't do that test. Mm -hmm. yeah you're gonna have to have a, a multiple guest test mm -hmm. so how about if the class is online you have a yes Ontario says guess. if you're online so that is um, a test that they know you were there. Okay. You took the test. We're in the classroom. The instructor knows you're there. You signed in. You participated. Uh, so you got your credit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does your CDC see up to date to reactivate and license? Yes. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem to yes. do it. Yeah. Yes, everybody knew that. This is the post license course, third. How long do you if you are active, Six months. yes, inactive, a year, one year, and if you don't do it by the end of that year, what's going to happen you to you? Again. You're going to come back in here and see me again. I know, he likes me so much. Ontario's going to know what's going on. What if you don't get the post license within six months? We go inactive. <coughs> yes. And uh, the license is inactive. Now, if you if you don't get the post license done within six months and your license is active, it will go inactive. inactive. Mm -hmm. And if it's already inactive, inactive then it'll be. Come on back. Mm -hmm. It was so much fun the first time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How much is a temporary license? Ooh. Ooh. Is that eighty-five? I mean, yeah, six, no, maybe half of one seventy. Now, temporary license. Temporary. That's the one, as soon as you pass your test, they're going to hand you an application, and you're going to bring that to your broker, and it's got fees listed on there. Oh, what? I thought we covered fees. Y'all look at it like we don't know. I remember seeing that. I'm seeing that. So let me say, I. I didn't remember. I saw the page, but I didn't remember what that was. Remember we had them on there, and I had, had little had pluses, pluses on which ones you need to know. Did. And, and, and book, I don't remember. And, <laughs> uh, One hundred and fifty dollars. One hundred fifty dollars. That's your it's temporary. Just, wait a minute. Yeah, it was. That's the same as um. Uh, that, okay. 
Yeah, yeah. Once you renew when you get your first license. Oh. They call that your temporary <laughs> license. <laughs> then after your post license, you get the original <laughs> license. Okay. Okay. And that's the one that's going to cost you 170 for the two-year period. Uh, but your temporary is 150. We're going to have to go back over the yeah, fees. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Go back in there, Gil. Okay. They don't count the month you take right. the test. Yes. It's the first of the following month. Plus, how many months? It's a total of six. It's the end of that six months. Yeah, you months. got the end. We're in October, so we got the end of October, and then we count six months. Right. And at the end of that six month, that's when your temporary expires. Mm -hmm. You got to have your post license done by then. And six months after. Okay. We're just talking about this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is it for you to transfer? $25. $25, yes. Um, any change on the license is going to be $25. You can change your home address without a fee because that's not a change on the license. But anything's printed on the license, um, you, yeah, if you get like get married or something and change your name, well, that's changing something on the license. Uh, if the brokerage moves, okay. then that address <coughs> is going to change. So any any change is going to be $25 per license. Once we done the license to another broker. You have to make go online, oh. make yourself in in terminate, or in, what is the word? Is it terminate? Inactive. Inactive <laughs> with that brokerage firm and then make yourself active with the other brokerage firm and call them and let oh, them know. Yes, call them know. <laughs> let the, the old broker know and let the new broker know. Um, you just don't know why one would say, no, they can't go inactive and change companies, but you still have to let them know. It's a courtesy. Yeah, I guess it's just courtesy. Why would it be inactive? Well, we covered this already. There are a couple of reasons. If the commissioner they take them from you. Yes, Vanessa says the commission takes them from you. They can make them inactive. You didn't keep your CEs. They didn't do your CEs. That made it inactive. And you didn't renew. You you didn't renew, and it's going to go active. And then if you don't renew by the next year, then it lapses, and you start over again. Um, anything else? You may choose not to be active. Well, yeah, um, here in Alabama, I've got an Alabama broker license. I'm one day probably moving to Georgia, and I'm thinking about that, so I've already got my Georgia broker's license, but it's inactive. And, do you, and you're a broker in Florida also? Yeah, that one's inactive as well. Mm -hmm. one, one day I'm thinking I'm, I may go back to the beach, but I won't keep paying them. Because I don't want to have to take class again. Mm -hmm. That's, so when you take your CEs, you have to take one for Florida and one yeah. for Georgia once you become active again. Yeah, both of those states, um, you've got to do CE even okay. if you're inactive. Okay. Alabama, you can mm -hmm. go inactive forever and not do any more CE. Mm -hmm. But you until have so you much get to ready do. to go active again, then you got to do the 15 to get you current. Mm -hmm. This one we did not cover, and as I was going through this, I remembered there is an exception to CE. I don't know that anybody even qualifies for it anymore, but you had to have been uh, 65 years old in the year 2000 and had to have been in the business at least 10 years. You're, yeah, you were exempt for CE. 65 years old in 2000, so that means you're 85 years old now and been in the business at least 30 years. Uh -huh. They figured you don't need any more CE. Well, I'm 65. Well, you were 65 in 2000. <laughs> That's the deal. Well, I thought, well, well I have to take <laughs> no. 
Indefinitely. Indefinitely. Uh, my Florida's been inactive for almost 20 years now. Oh, wow. uh, I don't want to let it go, though. You must pay your... Yes, pay your... Pay your um, you gotta pay your, your, your renewal fee. And you have and to pay that whether you're active or mm -hmm. inactive. You still have to pay the mm -hmm. same license fee every two years. Mm -hmm. And then do your CEs. Yeah. Do your... You'll have to do the two risk management. Do your 15 and hours. Three CEs. Uh, others. Selected. And that gets you in for uh, another renewal. Mm -hmm. Each company and branch office must have one QB qualifying broker. Okay, you gotta have a qualifying broker. And a license. A company license, yeah. <laughs> what do we have? We talked about this already. Um, well, well, Qualified license, company license, and salespersons. Mm -hmm. Well, you got to, have the, the, to to be issued a broker's license, an applicant. Got to be 21. Yes. Oh. Now we'll get back on the track oh, now. Okay. Let's move okay. down that road. Okay. And after they got to be a citizen of this state? Yes. Um, what's the last one? Of this state of the United States. A citizen oh, of the oh, United oh, States. Oh, Do oh, not oh, have oh, to be a citizen oh, of Alabama. Right. Pass the test? Yeah, that's the third one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Other than death? I guess I would turn that. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to deal with that one in a minute. Uh, this one, the broker wanted to quit. Okay. He could just step out, just put it in writing, and, and make uh, if you, yeah, if you're uh, uh, terminating yourself, you're going to have to let the real estate commission know that so I'm that they going can. to, yeah, so mm -hmm. they can go out of business. And then, um, and if you've got salespeople, you're mm -hmm. going to have to let them know. Mm -hmm. uh, just let everybody get to know. So, but what if you had a um, associate broker in that? They may want to become the qualifying broker. And then they have how long? We're going to get to them. I think I had a question. Uh, yeah, question or two. We're going to get to that that <coughs> person. Terminate, Terminate the agent. What's the broker going to do? What's the first thing we always do? Let them know. Let the, we're going to let the, the, we're going to let the agent it's know in writing. writing. Okay. Then we're going to do what? Go online. Go online. Make them inactive. Make them inactive. Making them active. And the third thing we're supposed to do is mail their license back to Montgomery. Okay. Mail okay. back. Yeah, we just, uh, I believe, talked about this one. I could have like 50 companies here, but they all have to be in the same location. And all the owners have to know that the, the qualifying broker is working for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. There, Tamara, now tell us. <laughs> <laughs> the broker fell over dead. There's an associate broker sitting in the chair next to him. And, and they have 90 days. Well, they're associate broker already. Yeah. Well, they just automatically, well, they would do. They go into active once that qualifying broker steps away, don't they? He fell over dead. They just. Associate broker. But they still have to apply for that, don't they? Remember, they, the qualifying broker is the one that made the application for the company license. Right. Now he's uh, dead. Oh, yeah. So the so, associate broker, the first thing he's got to do is what? He's got to license. been there at least uh, six months. Well, no. He, he, a, he, he wants to make an application license. for a company yeah. license. Yeah, that's and that's it's him, the qualifying broker. Right. And the accounts, the trust account has to be have his name on it. Yeah, now. he'll have to go to the bank and say, oh, I want cool. all that money put in my name. Mm -hmm. The bank's going to say, hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Yeah, probably needs to have some kind of secession plan. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, we got him on. He wasn't a qualified, he wasn't an associate broker, he was a salesperson. Been sitting in that chair for how many months minimum? Six. Six, six months minimum. Now he can do what? 
Mm -hmm. He can become the qualifying broker. Is that when they give him six months? That's when they give him another six months. No, he has to be, he has to have been a salesperson for a year, and then they give him another six months to take the broker, broker test, test. Okay. and apply and get a qualifying broker, uh, you know, a company license mm -hmm. in their name. Okay. But I don't know how that works because the rules have got to be two out of the last three years. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how we're going to draw that line right through there, but I'm sure they have faced that problem before. For the test, just know this is how it works. Someone who's handicapped, someone that's in a rural area. Could. Answer the book. Take it to Um. If there's a judgment of against a licensee, the recovery fund helps to to was it make make whole make them yes make whole the the person that was the aggrieved person yeah we got got all those little words down as aggrieved enough yeah that's exactly what you got to look at they gave you that word aggrieved I'm gonna say pay attention to it watch for that on the test. Um, how about on our recovery fund? Um, I think we got yeah. Here Thirty dollars. Here we go. Thirty dollars. Thirty dollars when you get your original license. Is it optional? No. What happens? <laughs> drops below half a million. They may actually put some money. That's right. They're gonna pass the plate around. And then the overage, they use it for continuing well for conferences or additional yes. education. Yes. They don't just throw that money away. <laughs> Uh, no, because they've already done no. it. Yes, thank you. If someone has a judgment against Judgment, them. that's the key word on this. They have got to uh, been drug into court and lost, didn't have any money to pay, and now there's a judgment against them. You take the judgment and give it to the Real Estate Commission and say, help me out here. Now, we got a couple of things here about how much? 50000 total. One transaction is $25 per person. Per um, individual. Per oh, $250,000. Yeah, 50000 in the aggregate on a person. person. Mm -hmm. I think that's what this one is. Mm -hmm. That's this question. Okay. Negatives, that one. Thank you, Barbie. That's probably the most likely thing they're going to do is revoke your license. Unless they can pay it back. If you can pay it back somewhere down the road when you win the lottery. <laughs> right. But would they have to go back through school if it was revoked? I don't know. It says revoked. Uh, I bet I hope they have to come back, back to school. Probably would have I hope to. they do. We need the tuition. Come on back. <laughs> They open up an investigation. That's the first thing they're going to do. <laughs> open an investigation. Looking for what? Any... To, to determine whether or not there's a legitimate violation. Mm -hmm. And was this person licensed? Okay. Two things they're looking for. Then they're going to start digging and gathering their facts. We're going to do a case study after a while. Violation and if licensed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the person's license and then what was the violation? That's the first thing you're looking for. Mm -hmm. But then the complaint's gonna get deeper. It's gonna list what? Oh gosh. What the complaint is. What the complaint is? How about who? Who who the complaint is against? Against? Where are they licensed? When were they licensed? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like they're just gathering all the information on you. And then they'll decide what to do. Here's the formal charge. Well, that's kind of what we just said. Well, they'll, 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 they'll notify you for a hearing. Yes. And they'll notify you. Uh, Is it 15 days? Yeah, I think that's our next question. What, to math? Right. Here, see, come on. <laughs> <laughs> How do you think she's going to do on her midterm uh, there tonight? Yeah, here we are. You're going to be sitting next to her looking at her. I'm going to do Jeff Hankins. <laughs> <laughs> so that's exactly what we're looking for here, though, is 
do you know it? Right. All right. How many days to hear it? You 15. don't need four choices. 15 days. Right. 15 days. It's a decision. Is it 30? 30 days for decision. 30 on appeal. 30 on appeal. We've got another question on appeal here. Oh, I thought it did. How much is the appeal bond? Two, $200. $200. $200, yeah. And that kicks you up to uh, circuit court where, uh, well, we'll get into one of those in a minute where somebody um, uh, wanted to hire a lawyer for the appeal. Well, you should have hired the lawyer when you went before the real estate commission because mm -hmm. appeals don't go back and readdress everything. Some of them got this summer so easy. Fraud? Fraud? Class? Misdemeanor? Class A misdemeanor. Oh, okay. Can they put you in jail for a class A misdemeanor? No. No. Okay. $100 minimum. Minimum and maximum? <coughs> Mm -hmm. 2,500, 2, 2, 2, yes. 100 to 2,500. Okay. That's the test question. Wait. Regardless of what we saw in those, those uh, cases that they've already settled, mm -hmm. this is what's on the test. 100 to 2,500. <coughs> they can suspend, revoke yeah. your license, or they can make you go back and take some more classes. She is on my power. Where did her go? Make me go to sleep. <laughs> I took a nap today. It helps. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to sleep in too. I was going to do phone phone conferences. I don't like days. <laughs> Said your license is revoked today. Oh. Well, you want to appeal it. Your license is still revoked today. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. 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 Put it yeah, yeah, yeah. And put up two hundred dollars. Yep. You do. You do. <laughs> Move on to another topic here. Trust must be held. Three years. Years. Seven years. Wait a minute, trust the trust fund must be held by, uh, a qualified person? There we go. The qualifying broker's got to be on the account. Uh, has to be on the account. Has to be a labeled trust or escrow in a bank. In the state. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Okay, that's the third one. Trust funds must be held in a bank in Alabama. Uh -huh. Brokers got to be on the uh, account. Uh -huh. And what else? Uh -huh. You had it I earlier. I know the bank the separate been. escrow account. Mm -hmm. You can't put it into your operating okay. account. So okay. you've got those three things. That's what you say. That's what you say. Who must hold it? The, the brokers. The broker is the one responsible for it. So I guess you could say he's the one holding it. Right. Because anything happens to it, it was in his hand. Yeah. Broker. Immediately turn it over unless it's some extenuating anyway, circumstances, like it's at night or it's right. If it's nine o'clock at night, don't don't take that money out. What about weekend or holidays? Would the same apply? I, I don't know about. That. I'm just saying, don't risk your life over money. Mm -hmm. That's right. We've had agents killed right here in Birmingham taking earnest money to their office at night. Mm -hmm. So don't do it mm -hmm. immediately. And tomorrow morning's just fine. As soon as it's possible. Immediately, if it's cash or 
when what sets? You did a piece of paper over here that says. Oh, when, when the con whatever the, the contract, contract says. Because they may have asked they have it. Yes. How may be possible? At closing. We had two different dates here. We've got earnest money dealing with sales. This one at the end. And that's got to be distributed within how many days? Seven days. Seven days. Mm -hmm. Now we had another one on rental security deposits. That's 60 another days. Six that's days. sixty days. You've got to get that money back or account for why. Six days. How long Three years. Oh, I hope in, the, in the in the in the in in the at the in the company. I hope you get this one. Real estate consumer agency. Very good, real estate consumer agency. I heard from all of you. <laughs> At the beginning of, of the, the relationship. relationship. Before any confidential information is disclosed to another. Tell the consumer or uh, the, what the agent's responsibilities and duties are? Yes, it's just a disclosure form. Is it a contract? No. no. Do they have to sign it? No. no. Do you have to sign it? Yes. You have to keep yes. it in your files for 27 Three. years? Three, Three. 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 <laughs> yes. Uh oh. No. 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 It does not. It does not, it does not because that doesn't mean that they want to want you to, you may be a transaction broker. Mm -hmm. So it does not so create this one agency. does not create agency, it's just a disclosure form mm -hmm. that tells them about agency. Mm -hmm. How is agency created? Well, is it a buyer's agreement? Or? Or a listing. Or a listing. Uh, or a seller's so agreement. Those are agency agreements. Mm -hmm. okay. You can only create an agency with Agency. Or written agreement. It has to be implied. It has to be expressed, not implied. Right. And Alabama implied agency is what? Non existent. Fraud. It's fraud. You walk like a duck. Talk, quack like a duck, act like a duck. They you, think you a duck. You, you, uh, you are you are breaking real estate law because you're implying that you're their you agent, are, and that's how we got the recad to begin with. Mm -hmm. People thought you were working for them. We just um, Tamara gave us this buyer and the seller uh, agency uh, agreements. Who's a consumer? Versus the client, uh, the consumer. Yeah, that's where we're going. One that buys goods. Yeah. I could think of well, maybe what your customer may be a customer for you. You may not have an agency, agency relationship with a customer. Mm -hmm. Who are you going to have an agency relationship client. with? Client. And that's our own customer. I got consumer, customer. We treat those the same. Okay. Right. Okay. Client's the one that's different. That's the one that we have extra duties for. Mm -hmm. And we'll get to those in just a second. Consensual. When the buyer and the seller are using the same agent. Form, yes. They're the same, well, the same broker yeah, right. has the listing and the buyer. Mm -hmm. We need dual agency here. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about how we separate that in a second. A material fact. Is something that's stated? Uh, something that would. So if there was land base, if there was land base, oh, that would be a material be fact. Help us say no. A material fact is something that a no. reasonable person would consider important to the transaction. Mm -hmm. A material fact to someone with small children may be the school zone. And if you tell them, oh yeah, this is the zone you wanted, and you know it's not, that's a material fact that you have, uh, they have uh, relied on you. 
you gave them false information, they relied on it, and they're damaged by it. Um, That's where we get back around to fraud. That's the um, definition of that. I believe we just talked about this. It can be implied if you're walking like a duck. What is it? Talking like a duck. Yeah. <laughs> and then they think you're a duck and say, how much do you think I should offer them on this house? Well, that's where you started to give advice. Mm -hmm. so to give advice, you must have an agent. Yes. Does this not person have does not have that agreement. This is someone you just met in the grocery store line and just talking about real estate. And they said, can you show me this house over here? What are you going to say? Pull out your form. Sure. Yeah, well, I'm going to start pulling out forms. Mm -hmm. But do you want to just go show them that house across the street as a transaction broker? Somebody else is listing. No, you don't no, want you to. Do that. No. Now, you don't want to. You want to create agency first. <laughs> yeah, you want to create agency with them because who are you working for? If you if you don't, you'll be working for the seller. Right, that mm -hmm. other seller. You're working for him. Mm -hmm. And his buyers that you met in the grocery store line, who they think you're working for? Yeah. 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 Yes. <laughs> this is why we do disclosures. This is why we say we need to be agency. Mm -hmm. I can't give agent. you advice. So we moved to single agency. That's where we have created one of these forms. Buyer agencies, a listing agency. Dual agents. What happened here? They are working for both the seller and the buyer. Mm -hmm. We had the listing and we got, we got one of the other agents brought the buyer. Now we're going to bring out the dual agency form called limited consensual dual agent and we're going to explain to them how we've got to just kind of put this little barrier up. We can't tell um, them anything that's going to hurt them the other way around. Agent for an agent. Agent for an agent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess that would be a good thing. Every agent is a sub-agent under their broker. As that transaction broker, you're going to be a sub-agent under the seller over there. You're working for them. You're not working for your broker now. You're over there working for another broker as their sub-agent because you didn't get agency with your client or your customer at that time. Oh. The hard questions? Hard questions, yes! What are our hard questions? Honesty, account, accounting, accountability, reasonable care, disclosure, disclosure. and answer, 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 answer the hard answer questions. questions. Yeah, answer their hard questions. In addition to those hard questions, what other couple things have you got to do? Be obedient. No, uh, no, no. Um, that's colonel. Now we're now this back. We're still in the hard questions right now. You've answered the hard questions. Now you must disclose any interest you have in the deal. Oh, yeah. And transmit all written offers in a timely manner. Mm -hmm. Now let's go to the colonel. <laughs> so we got our hard questions, and then we're gonna. Answer to the colonel. We're going to salute the colonel. And that is what? Confidentiality, yes. Obedience. Obedience. And loyalty. And loyalty, yes. Licensing. The licensee. The licensee, yes. Thank you, Ontara. Um. There's a consumer disclosure. disclosure booklet, pamphlet, I guess it is, uh, that you can give them along with this. Remember, it showed the uh, the, the the rights, and then it, it broke down single agent, dual agent, uh, broke them down, and told them everything they didn't do about them. That the, that the qualifying broker must 
Yes. Um, review. Yes. Banquets. Yes. Every year. Every year. <laughs> I had to dig it out there. I'm like, we got it on low. Thank you. Uh, and they have to sign it, too. They yes, they have to sign it every year. Thing. Saying that they understand the ways that we work with consumers. Y'all remember this? So far, I'm sorry. I mean, we, we went over this. There were only a couple that are exempted to recad. If you are working with an artificial entity, such as a government or a, another company, corporation, uh, say you were going to sell the mayor a new site for City Hall, you don't have to recad them. You okay. also do not have to recad in property management, owners or tenants. And the first one was what now? Um, the government. Of yes, in artificial entity. Artificial. Yeah, artificial. That's a company. The government. Um, they are considered uh, experts just like you. <clears throat> yeah, how do they feel about that? There's a spin or remote. Yes, yeah, they like, will. Uh, this is the one that will uh, and, and find you. Yes, they, they can jump on you with both feet with this. And this is the one that that'll pull the license. Um, not to avoid real estate laws. Yeah, that's kind of what you're doing. Family member shall pay and avoid real estate laws. Buy or sell yeah, in your family. I would say, yeah. Not in your family members' names, though. Yeah, that's what people do. If they've got a law written, it's because somebody's figured out a way to circumvent it. And here, people would buy and sell property in their, their relatives' names to avoid the real estate laws. Mm -hmm. So you got your license revoked. But this is the only job you know. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? Well, you're probably going to go out and start selling and buying property in your relatives' names. You're going to do options. You're going to figure out a way to get around the rules, and they'll come back after you again. Wow. Dishonest dealings. When your parent, child, or spouse is involved, the rules get tighter on us. They're watching us closer. So I answer you no. Know. Um, no, they no. don't know. You no. can't do that. Um, revoke your license. They're probably just going to revoke it from the very beginning. I said, you lied to us now. What's going to happen when we get down the road? So they're just going to cut their losses. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Immediately. That's uh, before it goes under contract. The best thing to do is disclose it in the listing agreement or any kind of marketing you do. Let them know right now. Hey, I own part of this. When we list a property in the MLS, there's a little box in there. We have to say, yes, I have an interest in it. Give them notice. There's your family. <laughs> That's the ones that you buy and sell and property for. Do you think any of them going to stand up for you in the real estate commission and say, oh, yeah, uh-uh. <laughs> because it's a health of safety issue. Yes, this is stuff that can, can hurt people. Would that be a material fact? Something yeah. health and safety? Absolutely. Yes. Yes, you will. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. You look for it. If you know, what's that? You, what's it? You know something, say something. Mm -hmm. Here, if you don't know, keep your mouth shut. If you don't know. Don't know. Yes. Mm -hmm. You sure will. Must have your name. Your name? Your name? Your name. And it has to be visible as this. Truthful. Okay. Truthful, your name, broker name. 
Okay. Oh, well, your name broke and down. does this apply to internet advertising? Yes. Yes. Yes, it does. A signature? <laughs> well, not that signature, but what's it got to have? Everything that you agreed upon. Mm -hmm. It's like the um. um it's expressed. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because the one thing they really get ugly about if you put this on a listing agreement, the one thing you absolutely cannot do. Netlist? Mm -hmm. No, this is a <laughs> listing agreement. Make your own make your own contract. No? no. <laughs> Expiration date. Oh yeah. Oh. And oh. no automatic renewal. Oh. oh, that's an easy point there. They like to ask you, can you have an expiration date? Can you have an automatic renewal on your listing? No. I don't have that question. No. Okay, can we have an automatic renewal listing? No. Here's your net listing. Can we tell us about it? <laughs> Come on, um, let's see. What is that list? When you, um, when the agent solicits to make more than what's written, what's written in the agreement on the selling price, sale price. Uh, let's go back to our example: the low lady bumped house in World above. War Two. I mean, uh, anything above what's written in the contract. Yeah. Okay. They tell you, okay. I got to get hundred thousand dollars out of this deal. Anything over hundred, you can have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's always illegal. Mm -hmm. Would that be the same as lottery? Like, um, mm -hmm. no. Okay. Our lottery. That's you know. If the if the, if the seller says yeah. they will, we're yeah, gonna offer you something. Offer you something for nothing. Mm -hmm. Selling mm -hmm. your property. Yeah. That's not. Mm -hmm. That's not lottery. Mm -hmm. Lottery is if no, they say. Not. If you come, we want to enter you into a drawing for Which a lot or for a house. That's one of our next questions too about lotteries. Uh, what are some of the possible disclosure forms that we've talked about so far? Recan. Recan. Hard question. Uh, we talked about it too. Uh, the, 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 the. We talked about uh, net sheet. We talked about lead based paint. Mm -hmm. That's about all the disclosures we've talked about so far. Um, hidden. Hidden. Latent means hidden. Patent means you can easily observe it. No. Right. You don't have to dis you don't have to discover things. Do you, need <laughs> you need to discover latent <laughs> defects. No. no. There we go. That's obvious. That is not latent. Mm -hmm. All right. Safety. Safety. Well, and safety. Like, yeah, yeah. Obviously, there's so much going on here. There, you, there may be some latent stuff here too. Mm -hmm. If it's eaten all the way through here, there may be stuff, bad stuff going on. Somewhere. Hidden. Yeah. I'm just saying this one's. No, we're gonna say we don't want this listing. Right. Mm -hmm. a legal problem, mobile problem. <laughs> oh, just just everything. Oh, you talking about what? Yeah. Other not on that house, yeah, but just yeah, in general. Yeah. <laughs> That's like everything wrong. Radon. <laughs> I should make a list. Uh, Mo, radon. Uh, and then your cover. It'll, yeah, lead-based paint. Mm -hmm. A lot of things that that are health and safety issues that we're going to dig deeper into. Um, 1978. 1978. Mm -hmm. Both the the, the 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 buyer and the uh, the agent. Yeah, the seller will sign it first. The agent that's working with the seller will present that to the seller and say, "Do you?" know about any lead-based paint in this house? And they'll say, no. Do you have any records? They say, no. no. You just sign, initial both of those. You initial it saying, I talked to you about lead-based paint. And then they're going to sign it saying, yes, this is correct. 
Now, when it goes to the buyer or the tenant, they have the right 10 days to test for lead-based paint. Um, you have to give them a booklet too called uh, How to Protect Your Family for Lead-Based lead -based Paint. paint. Um, it's nasty stuff. Uh, we, we talked about it extensively. We, we just did it's bad. Yeah. Did we ever even talk about the fine? No. It's severe. Eleven thousand dollars. For not give them a lead based paint form. Mm. Yeah, they're serious about it. And we just mentioned this the uh, pamphlet. You need it? you've got uh, a few days. Remember how many? What do you mean? Seven. That's seven. I'm thinking about something else. Yeah, when our office if our office moves how long do we have to let the real estate commission know? Is it know? 10 days? Or 30 days? 30 days. Okay. And we have to pay $25 so for each license to change the address. Okay. When you do the contract? Yes. When you make the offer. Mm -hmm. And then if you're on the other side, when you get the exactly. offer. And then you have to update it as things change. Not much is going to change because you're going to negotiate most of this over the phone and come up with a final, okay, here we go. But the things that do change, you must change. <laughs> if they ask, yes, direct question. Mm -hmm. But if they don't ask, you know, you Alabama does not have a law on stigmatized property. Yes. Yeah, it's kind of like a ghost. You can't see it. They tell you it's there. They tell you ghost is there too. Mm -hmm. But this one, you got to tell them about. Tell the safety. Yes. Caveat. Let the buyer Buy beware. Buyer beware. Watch them on Caveat Ventor. The, the ORs. Mm -hmm. Get you. <sighs> Written on your hand. Another one with acronyms. You get that. See it right there. It's written right on my hand. Safety. Hand is health and safety. A is assumption of duty. You became their agent. N is new construction. It has a warranty. And D is a um, um, direct question. They ask you direct, direct questions. You must answer. These are exceptions to caveat emptor. H is for what? H is health and safety. Oh. A is assumption of duty. N is new construction. And D is direct question. That one falls back to our hard questions. How does it help the seller? Yeah, how's this going to help the seller? By us being a caveat emptor state. Because if it's not one of those, if it's not a health and safety issue, they don't have to. Don't have to tell you anything. No. They don't have to tell you anything unless it's they know it's a health and safety. We have people that buy houses here in Alabama, never been to Alabama. They don't know. Just, they're going to say, as is. Mm -hmm. That's what they're going to do. They're going to say, as is. You go in and find out what's wrong with it. They don't know. Remember, it's right before the price. Now, you call? Is working for oh. whom? That's your agency disclosure. It's going to be in the contract. Even before you start talking about anything. Who is the listing company and who are they working for? Who is the selling company? Who are they working for? And it's got all these check boxes. None. Zero. None. Zero.
RESPA is a Real Estate Settlement Procedures Act. That came about because of mortgage fraud and issues like that. Here it says the RESPA form, what's it going to allow you to do? Well, it's disclosing all these mortgage facts. APR. Was it truth and lending? It's kind of, yeah, it's because of the truth and lending. That's all wrapped in there together. Mm -hmm. But the RESPA uh, is the uh, law that says you've got the right to choose your service providers. Here's what um, our attorney's going to cost. Now, if you can go out and find another one cheaper, you've got the right to use the other one. Federal, it's, uh, it just kind of levels the playing field to where um, you know more about the cost of the loan, the origination fees. They've got to tell you our origination fee is 1% or $40,000. They can put whatever they want to there, but it gives you the opportunity to go shop somewhere else now. That's what it's all about, giving you more information to make a better decision. Someone working, someone advertising your business without being paid? An affiliated business arrangement is if we had a mortgage company here as part of our business, that would be an affiliated business agreement because they're going to make money off of us, we're going to make money off of them. If you've got that, you have got to disclose it. You've got to say, I, uh, ABC Mortgage Company, uh, if you buy a mortgage from them, we get a cut. That's what the affiliated business arrangement is. So, so if a builder, sometimes they give, like if you use their preferred yes, lender. that is exactly what this okay. is. Okay, and, and they give you and some they disclose all whatever. that. Mm -hmm. They say, you can use another lender, mm -hmm. but we'll pay all your closing costs if you use us. And that's legal for them to offer you to... Absolutely. But you know how they're paying you closing costs? What's no extra percent interest? <laughs> Nobody rides for free. <laughs> the broker. No, they're a broker. Oh, yes, $250. Mm -hmm. yes. Remember, that was the one we had the most They don't ever write them a check. <laughs> and $250 is not the, the stand. They said you can they can charge you anything from $100 to $2,500. Remember, we saw some of them that was not yes. $250. Mm -hmm. Okay, come out of there, keep flashing that bright light off and on right there. You think they want to see us? Maybe that's a real estate commission. I don't know. Oh, yeah, I haven't heard anybody knock on the door. I heard them knock on You can't see it. Mm -hmm. right, let's finish this up and then we'll go see who it is. Immediately? Um, if you're arrested? Yeah, 10 days. 10 days, yes. And then after it's settled, how many more? 30. 10 more. To let them know. Oh, it ain't 30. Mm. You got 10 days to let them know you've been arrested, and you got 10 days to know when it's settled. And they're going to want a copy of the summons and everything involved with it. Yeah. No. No. Oh, that was quick. I didn't even read the question. You already answered. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's what I was talking about. Yes. You cannot conduct a lottery to draw people into your community. Uh, okay. Tell me the closing. Get it to them immediately. Like, immediately. Get it to them immediately. Reasonable time. Don't wait three weeks. There's an exception to this. The listing agreement. You must leave a copy of the listing agreement when they sign it. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and fill it out. Make a copy. Take it with you and leave them the copy. That's what the law says. You must leave a copy of the listing agreement at the time you do it. Revoke your license. I mean, they could. 
that could do that too. They can do a lot of things to you. But they're going first. They're going to say, "Why don't you give them back?" Yeah, like the, yeah. Why? Tell me, tell me more. Let's get this thing worked out before you have to go to Montgomery. I read the wrong thing. Give it to them as soon as possible. Yes, transmit all written offers immediately. And what else have you got to do when you get an offer? Is this where you're going to mean something? Mm, you gonna you mean? Well, now you're going to create another piece of paper with the offer. What's that other piece of paper? Uh, it's a net sheet. Yes. yes. <clears throat> Finally. Is, is, That's is actually one of the rules, too. Is it legal to violate any rule of the... Um, yeah. that's, a, that's, a, that's a... If yeah. you break a rule, they add this one on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is it legal to violate any... It's not... Yes, it is even. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hi. How you feel about what we did? It was helpful. It taxed your brain, didn't it? Yes. Yes, yes. yes that's yes. what we wanted to do. We wanted to reach in there and make you look around for that information. Mm -hmm. Not just... Look at a bunch of things to guess. I think it's C. Yes. I think my thing is I either overread the question. Yes. Or add to it. Yes. Yeah. Take stuff out of it and only don't put anything in or take anything out. Uh, let's look at some specific violations. Before we do that, let's take our break. Yes. And, and let's make sure they violence. Violence. And, like yeah. <laughs> and when we come back, we're going to look at these specific violations. Uh, you've got a list of them. And what we're going to do is we're going to break into groups here. Okay. And then you're going to read the violations. Each one of you have a, a list of uh, like one section of uh, counting issues. And I want you to look through this list and decide which one of those is the worst. And tell us why. Coming? Okay. That'd be easy. All right, let's take a break. All right, how'd y'all do? Good. Which? Who wants to? Who wants to start us off? You said who was? Oh, okay. who wants, yeah. Who? Y'all. Oh, okay. Uh, we picked the accounting and the okay. issues, and um, to be honest with y'all. They all bad. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. But Steve keep talking about the money, the money, the money. So to me, the mishandling of trust funds, commingling, failing to keep funds in separate federal insured banking out of balance. You don't have it in the bank, you got them in your bottom drawer on the other side of your desk behind the door bopped up in something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um Paying and receiving rebate. I heard mm -hmm. you say something about, about that. No rebate. No rebate. No, no rebate. rebate. Mm -hmm. So it then paying a fine for non sufficient fund checks. We ain't gonna never write them no checks. So we cause that's a ill no no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ill no no. But everything up under well, I hope that's one thing you take away from this class. <laughs> Don't ever write the real estate commission a check. I'm, I'm not. Because you have said it about four or five times. <laughs> failing to give your party a net sheet. You done said that about three or four times. Mm -hmm. I read, and, and the three years I'm keeping records, if I don't get now another one right, I'm going to get that one. One point, yeah. <laughs> it's up here. But anything basically dealing with the money is all bad. Okay. Hey, thank you. Absolutely. Okay. You got anything you want to add? I concur. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Why don't you guys have the honesty? We did the uh, representation. Okay. okay. And we went with failing to give a copy of documents to each party in the transaction. Okay. Um, which could be but very bad if you don't give, you know, the seller and your buyer information on what's going on uh -huh. so that they can go back and you know look over it. Uh, I'm I'm like with uh um, like Tamara for now. Is it? <laughs> All of them are bad. All of them have their um 
No novels to read. <coughs> um, huh? And next month. So <laughs> is there one that you would, if you were standing in front of the real estate commission, is there one of these you really wouldn't want to have to explain? On that I think I would too. I wouldn't want to explain that. That's why I wouldn't want to have to explain that. There's no way to explain it. You did it. Right. So no, I don't want to do that. No. Yeah, I think that's the one that they'd probably yank your mm -hmm. license yeah. on yeah. that one. All right, guys. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Let's see what we got. Have we learned anything new? You? Yes, we did. No. Well, how about since we've learned something new, we play a game. Ooh. We haven't played a game in here before. Okay. <laughs> oh. I'm going to have to move this over because i got to have the mouse to use here. I have to be able to get the mouse. <coughs> Want to play a game. <sighs> Defined, suspended, and revolved. I'll take a uh, fine for three hundred dollars. <laughs> <all right? laughs> and it's not the same. <laughs> oh, the auditor dropped in. Mm. Ooh, even worse, the auditor sent an investigator. Mm. Oh, and now they want you to come see the commissioners. What you did? And now you're in the newsletter. Oh, oh this has not been a good path. This is not a good game. <laughs> Find a new line of work. Oh, oh nice. Here's our board. Oh, All right. Um, we'll do teams. Yeah. We got a team one, team two here. Okay. All right. Let's uh, let's just start just randomly. We'll start here. Y'all pick up a, uh, a topic and a uh, number. Uh. Find a new line of work for $25. Uh -huh. Find a new line of work for $25. <laughs> okay. Ooh, ooh, that's completion of the year. The commission found Broker Brown guilty of violating license law and revoked her license. Since she was not represented by an attorney, Broker Brown decides to hire one and appeal to circuit court so she can get direction on how to testify and to also get an additional information about her case. Is this a good plan? No. No. Um, no. She should have had the attorney on right. the front end. There you go. Very good. Let's see what they said. <laughs> yes, yeah, so your appeals are, was there an error? Mm -hmm. So her getting, she should have got the attorney. Look, look, you said that uh, when you, when we were uh, in the little thing there. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Right. Meet an investigator, all right, for how much? Um, oh, 20. 20? Okay. Oh, it's confidential. Um, mm. to, ooh, what happened to her? Ooh, her. Mm. I don't know. Don't say it. <laughs> I seen on your face. Yeah, don't. don't <laughs> well, license probably were, were suspended or. They I don't think they they gonna want to mm. go. Why won't you talk to me about this? Yeah, it's why not right. confidential? Yeah, there's nothing confidential nothing between confidential. the commission and mm -hmm. the broker. The broker. Oh. It's, some, it's some fun investigator. <laughs> uh huh. Complain. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, you you got to tell them whatever they want. Give them whatever yeah. documents they want. Mm -hmm. um, they're gonna be nice. Yeah. But when you get sassy with them, they'll they'll slap you down. Like that hundred dollars. Yeah, they will. All right, back over here. Find a new line of work. Okay. For how much? No, my point. The one. Okay. <laughs> 
Jerry Barker, huh? Okay. <laughs> He said it up here. Oh. Okay, well then, it's actually an automatic revolt. That's just like the thing you told us about um, somebody had to go down to the commission and the broker didn't go with him. Right. Here, they gave him his 15 day notice. Mm -hmm. That's all they got to do. Yeah, but he didn't go. You don't he show up, up, that's on you. Yeah. They're going to go ahead and have your trial with or without, without, without you. That's right. Yep. Yeah, that's what the, that's yeah. what they're gonna do. They're gonna go ahead and yep. you not not right there to defend yourself, so yeah, yeah probably revolt. Because oh, well. mm -hmm. if you didn't even show up, you knew mm -hmm. what the score was. Mm -hmm. Alright. Okay. Back over here. Featured in the newsletter. Featured in the mm -hmm. newsletter. What number? Mm -hmm. How much? Fifteen. Fifteen. Specifically, there is one rule you know right here he broke. Mm -hmm. what, what is that rule? Put the sign in the yard without permission. Mm -hmm. yes. Your listing agreement gives you permission to put the sign in the yard. Mm -hmm. He didn't even have a listing agreement. No, he didn't. Mm -hmm. Put a sign in the yard, so he has violated that rule. Mm -hmm. In fact, he got a contract on the house when he got offered. Yeah. Yeah. Well, 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 Salesperson Jill has two open houses scheduled on the same day, so she paid her unlicensed cousin Brenda to hold one of them for her. Jill carefully explained to Brenda how to show the house to generate interest, but told Brenda if anyone wanted to make an offer to call her because only a licensed person can write the offer. Is Jill's broker going to be proud of her? No. Mm -hmm. No. No. An unlicensed person cannot show a house. Uh, and let's see what they said. <laughs> the broker's not gonna be proud of me. Uh -huh. <laughs> wow. Need some right. risk management classes. Bro. Which one The auditor dropped in. The auditor dropped in for how much? Let's five. We got five. five. <laughs> Maybe go easy on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Only who can pay? The broker. Only the broker can pay. And this oh, is okay. doing this a property management. Sad. Sad. <laughs> this is how you get in trouble in this <laughs> business. Oh, doing private management on the side. <laughs> Most brokers will not touch property management. It's just it's just like walking into a room full of snakes. Why? It's everything that can go wrong. We get calls Sunday afternoon, two o'clock. There's a snake on the front porch. You're gonna come get it? <laughs> yeah. There's a snake in the house. You gonna come get that? Probably not. <laughs> no, probably but not. what if that snake oh, bites him? They told me there was a snake in the house, what man. It bites him. Now who's in trouble? The not necessarily. Yeah. Uh -huh. they, they, when they, they call, get, they yeah, call. Yeah, when that lawyer calls you. Yeah. Yeah. You knew the snake was in the house. Yeah, because they called and told you. Mm -hmm. There's just so many things that can go wrong in property management. Mm -hmm. You know how you can call. Yeah, it's just. Yeah, right. it is. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be paid through the broker. Let's 
Do a couple more. Let's go with um, $25 under fe featured in the newsletter. Featured in the newsletter. That's down here. Okay. Lucy is a salesperson for risky real estate. That so must be a property manager. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Another salesperson with risky real estate house at 849 Pleasant Avenue. Susie and her husband decided they want to buy that house. So what disclosure, if any, has to be made to the owner? That's when they, um, um, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. Let me get the word right. She, she, she had to tell them uh -huh. that she's an agent. Right. Because mm -hmm. she's at an advantage. Because mm -hmm. she knows, the, she knows yeah. confidential yeah. information already. Yeah. That's where we got to get mm -hmm. in here. You got to withdraw here and say, hey, uh, I'm interested in buying this mm -hmm. house now. And if it's your listing, can you really represent them still? And yeah, you're probably going to have to say, we're going to have to break this and then and do let's, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's come back together. Yeah. Get your broker involved. Mm -hmm. Let them know what's going on mm -hmm. and they'll guide you through it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But Except if you got all that inside information and then you use it against them, that's bad. That's, that's going to be bad. 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 bad for you. Steve, mm -hmm. could you go, go over that? So Yeah. Um, so it was just a salesperson for risk of willing. Uh, the company had the listing. Mm -hmm. Another agent with that company wants to buy it. Mm -hmm. Now you've got agents in here. That they're both under the same broker now. Mm -hmm. The best we could do would be limited consensual, but mm -hmm. I'm thinking I need to go further than that. I need to just break. Especially because one of the agents wants to buy the house. Yeah. Right. We need to break this agency agreement and say, you know, they want to buy it. Now let's look at just lay everything out on the table. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we work it. Like we the, work it, it out. Like the, everybody's kind of in cahoots. Yeah, that's the, what it would look like uh, uh, against the seller because mm -hmm. everybody kind of on the same oh, team over right. right here. Yeah. And they were using all the magic powers to. Mm -hmm. You okay. think they gonna call the real estate commission? If they get mad and feel right. like one thing they go right, yeah. yeah, that's why you need to go in and fix it up in the beginning, so they won't have no reason to. Got to disclose to the mm -hmm. owner. Mm -hmm. Yep. Let's do one more. Mm -hmm. Give me a heart. Yeah, I'll Auditor heart dropped right in. Auditor dropped in. Let's talk. Let's talk. Oh my goodness. Judy, Judy, Judy. Judy trouble. Judy Jesus. Yeah. Uh she's she violated the bar. Yeah. She engaged in the business without a license. Uh, owners, owners can own a real estate company without having a real estate license. No problem with that. They just can't do this part, soliciting the barn sale. They can't do that. Um, other than that, they can, they can do anything. I didn't know that a person without a license yeah. could actually own a yeah. real estate company. Yeah. 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 They don't have to have a license, but they can't do license barn sale stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see. Can I ask you a question? Then, it is real talking, easy. Well, what sense would that make to be the owner but not have a license? Well, when you limited or restricted like that, a lot of investors are like yeah, that. Yeah, investors. Yeah. The companies, but they don't have a license. Mm. We have one here. Uh, I've got a company here that I'm the qualifying broker and the owner is not licensed. He's a mortgage broker okay. and he's buying mortgage leads and then there's a real estate part of that that he's going to sell off to us. You see, he won't, he won't be doing anything. I'm the broker, I'm the one transferring the leads and all. So, mm -hmm. no problem. As long as he doesn't go out and try to get a listing, mm -hmm. 
put a sign in your yard. Yeah, put a sign in your yard doing these other things, mm -hmm. then we're okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll have to be on the checking account, and I have to make the company application. Mm -hmm. uh, his name's not on anything, anywhere. You, you. But if he goes out and does something, who are they coming after? You. Yeah. You. yeah. All right. That was fun. Let's back out of this. We got another, another one I want to do here. You pulling that all the time. Hey, yeah, he, 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 he bad to the phone. Bad to the phone. So you messed up. No sick, no check. It's a torture license for naked. You ain't cool. Is it all the way for me? It is. I'm going to see you. Ain't even cool. Oh, you know, oh, he tried to shoot. 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 All electronics smarter than me. <laughs> <laughs> for real, for real. Sell all there the way. You know. Now, let's pretend we're the commissioners. We've gone through the laws and we've gone through some exercises. Now, I get to be the one black person. And what's the other position? <laughs> what's the other position? And she gonna be the black person. No, be, what, what's the other position that you you don't have to um, uh, be so like? Consumer Avenue. Consumer Avenue. Avenue. Okay, let me do that. <clears throat> Y'all read the case. Well, let's decide what we're gonna do here. A rap received a phone call from Betty Byer, who just closed on the home where they believe there was something going on. Their salesperson, yes, front and back. Oh, now, no. <laughs> Their salesperson, Sam Salesman, said he wanted to be their agent and could get them the best deal if they would quit working with their other agent and sign with him. Mm -hmm. But now they're just not sure he was working in their best interest. Mm -hmm. We see anything wrong in that first paragraph? Mm -hmm. Right off, I see something wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he lured them away he from. To, from them to break a contract with another person mm -hmm. for his benefit. Mm -hmm. Here's one thing. Yeah, no, no. Sam, salesman, called Betty Byer about a home he had listed because his mom, who owned the home, had been advertising the home on Facebook as a FISBO. FISBO means for sale by owner. Mm -hmm. With exaggerated features, mm. her phone number and Sam salesman's name on the ad, he helped to write. Y'all see anything wrong in there? Mm -hmm. He didn't put his brokerage. There you go. He didn't put the brokerage in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's see. He didn't disclose that he was related to the okay. to Betty. Mm -hmm. No, to the mom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Betty met with Sam and he said he wanted to help her get the best deal and his years of negotiating experience guaranteed it. She didn't need to worry about the other agent because all she had to do was fire him. Ooh, oh, did he lured her away from the yeah. uh, contract? Uh, now, this, he said he wanted to help her get this deal, and his years of experience guaranteed it. Yeah, okay. uh, but that's like a false claim, though. Oh, well, yeah, but in sales, you can do stuff called puffing. Puffing. Mm -hmm. Call what? Puffing. Oh, you know, I call. think this would probably be puffing. Yeah, you know, which is oh. not actually illegal. So oh, when you look at yeah. it, uh, he's just saying, I'm the best, guaranteed. Yeah. This is the, well, the best hamburger in the world. That's just puffing. Which would be the same as the exaggerated features. Yeah, the home, right? yeah, okay. yeah. We're, we're there, but to exaggerated features in the home, I don't know, I didn't took that too far. Mm -hmm. It's just, I wanted to know, we're not telling the truth in the ad. Yeah. That's where we're going with this. Okay. All right, go to our next page. While in Sam's office, Betty signed an exclusive buyer's agency agreement. In addition, Sam asked for an administrative fee check 
for expenses made out to him. He finna lose his life. Oh, you see what's coming, huh? Mm -hmm. Sam was so happy about getting a check, he forgot about any disclosures. <laughs> Did we have some disclosures we needed to do? Yeah. 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 In the buyer agency agreement, Sam thought he was worth more than the 5% commission the seller was offering All under right. an exclusive right to sell no. agency no. agreement. So, he asked Betty to pay an additional 5% off the books mm. in cash, mm -mm -mm. which she did three days after closing. After closing, oh, oh. goodness. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. so yeah, you all remember those things. Yeah, those are things in the parking lot. Uh-huh. <laughs> Home was built in 57 with asbestos flooring in the kitchen. Most of it had to be replaced when termites were discovered a few years ago when they ate through the aluminum wiring. Oh my God. <laughs> Paint disclosure and, and disclosing oh it. Sam recently helped his mom install paneling in the basement over a deadly form of mold. Health and safety. Reason seller was moving was because Sam had told her about a nuclear dump opening next door. <laughs> and, a new, no. and a new sex offender prison being built across the street. It's and it would include a halfway house. Oh, yeah. Seller had already decided to move due to the stigma of the murder suicide that had taken place in the home. She still thinks there's ghosts in the attic. What has Sam done wrong? No, what didn't he do? Yeah, what did he do right? Did he do anything right? Sam. Now, y'all say, as we were going through this, you mind, you, you were pulling these things out that he did wrong. So let's just go back and let's look. The first one, we caught that one. Fire that other agent and hire me. That's a violation. That's a violation. On down here. He was puffing. Yeah, this is just puffing. So we're not going to. Give him a violation for puffing you. He didn't disclose that his mother owned the home. Right, that, that had to be disclosed. Parent, child, spouse. Mm -hmm. um, got her phone number on there. Sam's name, but no, no broker you called that. Yeah. Um, what, Sam, he wanted to get her the best deal. More he didn't establish, he didn't establish agency. Didn't there. Give, yeah, didn't, well, um, that's on our next one up here, but he was so excited. Methodist. He was so excited about getting a check, he forgot about any yeah. disclosures. What kind did he have to give her? The um, recad first. The, the buyer agency? Yes, because he Recad. did an exclusive mm -hmm. buyer agency. Mm -hmm. um, but he forgot any of his disclosures. Like, uh, my mom owns the house. Mm -hmm. And he asked for an administrative fee made out to him. Him, yes. Uh, that is a but violation. And. Uh, exchanging money, it has to be done at or before closing, three days after. Mm -hmm. When she could get cash, yeah. kick back. Mm -hmm. Built in 57, right. so there's Paint another disclosure, disclosure. Paint disclosure. lead based, mm -hmm. asbestos, you, you, apparently you know it's got asbestos right. because you're saying we had to do it because of the termites. Right. Another so thing we didn't wire. disclose. Asbestos, lead, termites, aluminum wiring is a health and safety issue too. So if they were doing that as is or caveat. I still okay. think we need to talk about this is my mom's house. Yeah, but he ain't mentioned it. And recad. Mm -hmm. And even as is, you've got to disclose what you lead based thing. Mm -hmm. a, a health and safety that you do know. I think asbestos is. Now, the uh, termites. Um, and the mold? Yeah. He installed power over the mold. Termites is probably latent. Mm -hmm. But he knew about them. Yeah, he knew about them. Um, what else do you know about? The, the paneling? The wire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the dump and the sex offender prison. So this, yeah, this is knowledge he had that he didn't, as their agent, mm -hmm. anything you know or suspect, you got to tell him. Right. Tell his mom. But what fact is that? What kind of fact is that? The material. That'd be a material, material fact. fact, yes. Sure, I'd be an absolute material fact. They're putting a nuclear dump over here in a sex offender prison here, and they're going to have a halfway house too. Yeah. Why well, a three year old running around in the yard? Yeah, oh, yeah I didn't put that in there, but we could have fluffed it up a little. <laughs> what violation did Sam commit? Really? 
So you really you think Sam's going to have a future in this business? No, 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 no. What's, no, no, no. I'm just not sure we can list all the things he did wrong. He'll be on the episode of American Greed. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll catch him. <laughs> yeah, we'll get him. Oh, all right. That wraps up our law review. Oh, okay. Now, what kind of questions y'all got on law? Because we're through with law. We're not going to revisit law again. Yeah, and you would read something like this and it just jumps out at you. Yeah, I know that. I, yeah, I knew that too. Yeah, yeah. And they should have done that. That's where you should be right now. You should be able to read something like this and say, I see what's wrong. I see what they did. Mm -hmm. I can't do that. Okay? Mm -hmm. We're good? Mm -hmm. Alright. Then um, let's move on to our next one, our contracts. Before we do, I'm going to go ahead and bump the air conditioning down a little bit. I'm seeing anybody... Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, here it comes. Alright, y'all have another handout on contracts. Okay, we got contract questions. And let's squeeze this one out a little bit. Exercise, or we want to just go down them one by one. Y'all make the call. You mean like each person take one? You could. I don't want to put anybody on the spot if they don't know the answer. But we could take uh, volunteers. Okay, I think I do the volunteers. Five, let's do volunteers. Okay. Take. Uh, no. Here we go. A real estate professional has an exclusive right to sell listing on a building. The owner is out of town when the real estate professional gets an offer from a buyer to purchase the building, providing the seller agrees to take back a mortgage. The buyer must have a commitment from the seller before the seller is scheduled to return to the city. Under these circumstances, the I picked D, and um, it was the real estate professional must obtain the signature of the seller to a, to affect the contract. Mm -hmm. Because you always be saying that when you make the contract, I mean when we write the contract, it has to be signed at the time. Yeah, and that's what they have. The, the answer is um, must obtain the seller to affect the contract. Mm -hmm. uh, and we had an offer. So it was signed already by who? It was by the buyer. buyer. They had already signed it and they had put their terms and all in it and then sent it over to the seller. And here, if the seller just signs it as they wrote it, then they've got a two sided contract, contract by lateral. But the seller. Uh, said no, I can't do that. I got to have more money for it. I got to do this different terms. What's going to happen? A minute. Well, uh, we'll have a uh, counter. counter, counter offer. offer. Because he's going to get it, and he's not going to sign it. Mm -hmm. He's going to go back up here and maybe draw a line through the price. Mm -hmm. 
put a new price and then initial it right there. And then it's going back as a counter offer. Mm -hmm. Now the buyer has got to look at it and they say, okay. Mm -hmm. So they just initial the price change mm -hmm. and send it back. The seller has already initialed the price change. All he's got to do now is sign the contract. Right. Then what has to be done? Cola, the A on Cola. You think that it reached an, after they reached the agreement, then they signed it. Acceptance. Acceptance. It's got to go. It got to. I have accepted your offer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, we, now we're good. We have now a executory mm -hmm. contract. Okay. Yeah. All right. Who wants to take the next one? To sign a contract with a sale of real estate means to transfer one's rights under the contract. Yes, uh, we talked about how they did this down at the beach and they were coming out of the ground. It's going to be two years before it's done. Mm -hmm. Well, people can go ahead and buy and commit to today's price mm -hmm. and then the price is going up. They can sell their contract mm -hmm. to somebody else. Right. And then that person could sell it and sell it and sell it. It could be assigned again and again and again. Each so one of the option come over. No, this is an assignment of the contract. Oh, okay. uh, that's not actually an option. They've got a contract. Alright, next one. Who wants it? Which of the following yeah, which of the following followings describe a contract that has not yet been fully performed? And I chose the executory. Yeah, we just just did that with our contract we just had. everybody signed is executory. I want the next one. An applicant for a real estate license passes the Alabama license exam. What additional steps must be completed to obtain an original license? Um, a complete 30 hours of post license education within 12 months. Yes, and that would be if their license was inactive, wouldn't it? Because yeah, it would be six months if it's active. Correct. All right, thank you. Got, uh, so one, two, three, four, we're back around, starting over. What number are we at? Number, number 30. Okay. Go ahead. Bill has Andrew as a buyer agent. Bill confines he filed for bankruptcy two years ago. Bill would like to find a seller who is willing to carry the loan. In this situation, a correct statement about Andrew's responsibility regarding disclosure of the bankruptcy when presenting the offer to purchase is that D requires to disclose the bankruptcy because it is a material fact, information important to the seller evaluation of the offer. You know, why do you think that's a material fact in this case? Is it because, oh, uh -uh, uh -uh. Is it because the it was going to be financed by the seller? That's material. If I'm loaning you money, I can't. I want to know you filed bankruptcy two years ago. Mm -hmm. That would be absolutely a material fact. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. A broker learned that the personal assistant of one of the broker sellers per equal had changed terms on a com completed contract and signed oh. the buyer's initial. Wow. <laughs> because the deal was a big one and because the broker knew that the buyers would have approved, the broker took no further action. Ooh. In this situation, the broker has guilty knowledge mm -hmm. and may be disciplined by the real estate commission. And if it comes before me, right, yeah. Yeah. I just, uh, they may pull that broker's license for that. Yeah. Signing like that and having this other knowledge that it was changed terms. Whew. I wouldn't want to have to go down and explain that. <laughs> All right, next. <laughs> Number 36, before writing up an offer to purchase for a buyer, a licensee must fill out which of the following forms. <coughs> Excuse me, D, estimated closing costs. Yes, every time you make an offer <coughs> or you're the other side and you get the offer, 
You've got to do a net sheet for your side. If you're doing a dual agency, both sides. Mm -hmm. Okay, so next one. Also be a net sheet. Okay. okay. A real estate professional enter into a listing agreement with a seller under which the seller, seller will receive 22000 from the selling of a lot and the real estate professional will receive any sales proceeds over this amount. Mm -hmm. This is this type of listing is a net listing. Net listing. Can we do that? No. 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 Yeah. That'll be a gimme question too if y'all get that. <laughs> Alright. Next one. Okay. Thirty-eight. A seller signed a 90-day listing agreement with a professional. Two weeks later, before any offer could be presented, the seller was killed in an accident. What is the present status of the listing? The listing agreement was terminated automatically when the seller died. Y'all like that? Yes. That's what happens is a personal service agreement may be known as a personal service employment contract but still it's personal between two people to perform something and if one of them dies it's just like our where we gave the neighbor permission to walk over and fish in the lake mm -hmm. that dies with either one of them okay now had this gone to contract and mm -hmm. we had a two we, we the listing turned into a sale two-sided contract then the owner died what happens? It's, it's still a valid still contract. Still a valid contract. And it's an executory contract because it's still moving toward closing. Great. I have, but didn't you say on the test it didn't call it a personal service employment agreement? It left the employment part it off. It left the employment part off. It just yeah, what is. You have to sit there and think about what it said again and then go back through there. But you have already narrowed it down to two, so it can only be that personal. It didn't say anything else about anything else. You just had to make sure you read what you read. Yeah, don't read anything yeah. into it yeah. or take anything out of it. Every word they have in there is there because it's got to be there. Except, sometimes they'll say, and it was Tuesday afternoon at 2 o'clock and the wind was blowing from the south. What's that got to do with it? They had a, had a, have a word for, for that type of when they add add extra confusing <laughs> no it, it, it was in our little book okay that talks about the format of the test I yeah read that, that. Mm -hmm. book, <laughs> it'll tell you how they word all that that's what you was talking about, mm -hmm. talking about earlier. Okay. and then that question that um, she just finished reading you know how you talk about the the uh, dominant tenant and the servant tenant uh -huh. they use those words instead of some of the words that you're using of who was serving who. And then you had to figure out, and I was like, oh my God, who's doing what? You know, which side is which to get that the right answer. The servant serves. Servant serves. And it has to be where the owner sold off the back part of the property. If you you own all of this mm -hmm. and you kept the front part and sold off the back part of it, you've got to give them ingress and egress. Yeah. We haven't gotten to that mm -hmm. yet. Uh, no, we haven't got to that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just just while we're there, I'm going to go ahead and talk okay. about it. We're just talking about what here and then I'm like, what? Yeah, yeah. well, that was the dominant <laughs> servant that she brought. Yeah. We haven't talked about that yet. Okay. Uh, but the oh. dominant is the one that. Uh, gets served by the servant. Well, we get in that. Yeah, one, that then. question. Yeah, just ownership. Like we'll, that. We'll get on that. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to the next one. Number forty-one. Forty-one. Okay. Is that mine? If Harold does not want to be obligated to purchase a property, but would like to have the right to purchase a property within sixty days for three hundred thousand. Carol should try to negotiate be an option. An option. Now, who does that obligate? The seller. The seller. And the seller is also known as a vendor. Yeah. Watch them on those those words because they'll have 
a bunch of vendor, vendee, trustor, trustee, mm -hmm. maybe all on the same one. He said, huh, mm -hmm. huh. Uh, the agent requests that a second contract be drawn up between the buyer and the seller in order to help the buyer get a larger loan. In this circumstances, the parties are B? Yes, fraudulent. That's mortgage fraud. That's what they're trying to commit there. Mortgage fraud, you usually have to have a couple of people involved. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe an appraiser or a closing attorney type. you got to have two or three people to make the fraud go forward. And here, they're trying to do two contracts. Well, why? Mm -hmm. Trying to cheat somebody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, 54. A lease agreement is signed by a leasee who is 16 years of age. Which of the following is true? I said the lease agreement is voidable. Voidable at whose option? The minor. The minor. The 16 year old, yes. Mm -hmm. I, I thought it would be. Mm -hmm. That's what I want you to. Mm -hmm. This is a perfect example of, because I had chose A, and in my mind it was, I didn't think a 16, it, it, well, A says a 16 year old person cannot sign a lease, but a 16 year old can sign it, yeah. but is it going to be a contract because they've signed it? Mm -hmm. So I chose A thinking, well, no, a 16 year old can't sign a lease, but then I thought, I heard them. <laughs> you know, Opie signed so, one with Floyd, right? Roger yeah. Martin. I couldn't figure out, I put a big star by, like, why did you do that wrong? Yeah, that goes back to that when you were saying uh, someone died, but they left something to a 16-year-old. They decide to sell it over to someone else. Is that legal? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's voidable at the miners' option. That's crazy. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. No, Okay. And which of the following? Does the listing agent earns a commission even if the owner sells the property to his cousin who never met the listing agent and never saw any advertising by the agent? Exclusive right to sell. Yes. Yes. That's a, you get that yeah. agreement and no matter who sells that property, owner, you, somebody else, you get paid. Is that the one where you said you may put like a um, a that'd be the other one? That'd be the agency one where you where you saying um, uh, he's wanting to exclude somebody like his cousin. Uh -uh. I, what I was going to ask was, is that where you said like if you wanted to maybe say for the first two weeks, yeah. if if you yeah, said that, if that, the that, seller yeah. sells yeah. it then. But other than that, but you want to put a date on it. Right. Don't just let it drag on and then right. three months later after you've had 15 open houses and shown it a hundred times and he said, yeah, I'm going to sell it to my cousin. Mm -hmm. Thanks for all your hard work. Mm -hmm. I think we're on 58 now. It ain't me, is it? And I'm, I'm, it can be you. Okay. An amount that is stipulated <laughs> in the contract that serves to compensate a seller in the event of a buyer default is called I, I said liquidated damages. Liquidated damages. Now, see, they got C there. It says earnest money. Yeah, I, I had but, marked that. Uh -huh, that's why I they're, had marked that. They're challenging you there. Uh -huh. Because that's what the money actually is called, is earnest money. Uh -huh. But once it defaults, it's liquidated damages. Mm -hmm. It addresses that in the uh, contract. Mm -hmm. so, the, so, the, so in the contract, is going to uh, word that in the event of a default, mm -hmm. that um, the escrow... That the seller's will, option. Okay, that the mm -hmm. uh, earnest money will become liquidated damages. Yes. Okay. But see here, they, they threw the one on there. Oh, and I believe it's escrow funds too. Mm -hmm. so, oh no, I got three right answers here. So I'm gonna pick the other one. <laughs> yeah, we, we talked about that for a minute. 
The listing agent presents an offer to the seller. The seller wants to think it over until the next day. That evening, the listing agent receives two more offers from other brokerages. When should the second and third offers be presented? A, immediately. Immediately. We've, we've been over that four or five times too. Mm -hmm. That's one of your hard questions, and then you got two over here. Present all offers immediately, immediately. and disclose your interest in the property. Mm -hmm. Which of the following describe, describes an offer that the seller has accepted and proper notice to have? But it has been given to the buyer of the seller acceptance. See? Exclusory. Yeah, we got a two-sided headed toward closing contract here, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with executory as well. An owner of a ranch enters into a sale and leaseback agreement with a buyer. Which statement is true of this arrangement? I, I said A, but I got a question mark. This one you have to really think about it because. The owner of the ranch enters into a sale and leaseback agreement with a buyer. Alright, so the owner sold his property. Now he's leasing it. Uh, he's leasing it from that person. Mm -hmm. So what is he now? He's the owner. He should be the leasee. Now the buyer, well they're asking you who, who's what the, 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 the buyer is the the one that bought it is now leasing it back to the mm -hmm. uh, to the farmer. original seller. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's the leaseor. Yes. Yeah. The buyer is the leaseor. Mm -hmm. Buyer is the leaseor. Mm -hmm. Buyer is the leaseor. Go ahead. <laughs> Who's that? Steven? Stephen? Steven? Steven. Steven, a listing agent, is frustrated that the property has been on the market for over two months and he wants to sell his home quickly. Steven shares with a non represented buyer that the home has been on the market for a long time. So the seller want so the seller would welcome an offering. Wait a minute, I'm sorry. So the seller would welcome any offers on the home, the buyer makes an offer at the price at a price more than he expected. The offers, I mean, women, more than he had expected to offer. Has Stephen violated any duties to the seller? I originally said A, but the answer is uh, B. Yeah, that one um, is kind of wishy there. It says. He said, what he said that he would welcome any offer on the house. Mm -hmm. I'm just not sure that crosses the line of saying they're desperate, they've got to sell, they'll take anything. Mm -hmm. But they're saying that did cross the line, saying they'll take any offer. Mm -hmm. So that's where you've crossed the line there because <laughs> Stephen has a fiduciary responsibility to the seller to get the most for the house. Mm -hmm. And if he's coming in and saying, yeah, they'll take less. Just right off, he's hurt his self. Mm -hmm. In a purchase agreement, the buyer and seller agree to liquidate to liquidate the damages as remedy for default. If the buyer does default, the seller keeps only the buyer's earnest money. Yeah, that's what the liquidated damage is here. Yeah. the amount I'm putting up and that will become liquidated damages if they breach. Okay. A woman found a buyer for her neighbor's house. The neighbor does not want to pay the woman a fee. If the woman goes to court, she will have to prove that she held a real estate license at the time she found the buyer for the neighbor's house. I put D. Um, and what else would she have to have besides a real estate license? Permission. And I'm not seeing that listed there. Mm -hmm. what, what would she have to have to get a commission? 
a, 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 a listening agreement. There you go. Listening. I didn't see that there. But you got to have a listening agreement that says I'm going to get paid. You bring me a buyer. licensee represents the buyer. The buyer wants to make a written offer that is 50% below the asking price. How should the agent respond? Uh, D, promptly write up the offer. The offer. <laughs> if they offer you a half price, that doesn't matter. House may only be worth half price. <laughs> <laughs> and the buyer was, I mean, the, the owner was just trying for more. Yeah, if they say write it, you write it. Next one. Which of the following describe a contract where the buyer enter into a buyer agency agreement that also gives them the right to enter into agency contract with the other agent? I was totally confused on that one. The answer is an exclusive agent buyer. But we put down. Oh, yeah. B. We got a question mark, but we also said B and D. Which one is D? It was D. Oh, okay. Exclusive right to buy. I, well, I chose exclusive right to buy to buy buyer agency contract, which was A. Mm -hmm. Still. Mm -hmm. He explained that into the agency right. contract. Question the agency. Which of the following describes a contract where the buyer enters into a buyer agency agreement? That, the, that gives him the right to enter into agency contracts with other agents. agents. And, uh, there's what, 82, they're saying D, exclusive agency buyer, exclusive agency buyer agency contract. Is there such an animal? We have an exclusive, uh, some of this stuff is national and it may show up on, on our sample stuff here, okay. but your Alabama test won't have anything on it that's not Alabama specific. Okay. Like this exclusive agency buyer agency contract, I'm having trouble with that just like you are. The words don't, they're not lining up like they should. Um, I see this as a, um, not an open listing because it's got buyer agency. Exclusive right to buy a buyer agency contract. I don't like that because he can enter in with other agents. <laughs> it sounds more like an open list. That's what me. I I, yeah, you know, we, we marked it. It was a question mark for us. That's what it sounds like to me, but uh, you're not going to get anything like this on the Alabama test. It'll be the kind the ones we use here. Yeah. Yeah, we had a question mark. I'll have to go in and just take that question out. Okay. Susan, a listing broker, present an offer to her client, a seller with a seller price much lower than what the seller is asking for the property. The offer allows the seller 24 hours to itself. Susan recommends that seller con counter the offer and leaves a blank counter with the seller. The seller emails Susan in the morning saying that based on the wishes of her children who are not on the title, she has accepted the offer. Mm. If, if, if this, wait a minute, if in this case the offer. And then I put C, maybe a voidable contract due to the duress. Yeah. Because she was talking yeah. about her children. Yeah. And you know, they can put a lot of stress on their brain, huh? And here she <laughs> might not have wanted to sell. Right. And they they yeah, push her out. Sounds too. sounds yeah. like duress to me. Yeah, we have Maybe it's voidable. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And duress is something we're seeing more of now, I think, because we have two and three generations living in a house. Mm -hmm. And that may be what was going on here. They're trying to push grandma out to the nursing home. They ain't going to no nursing home, I'm sorry. 
um, 103, the broker receives an earnest money deposit with a written offer to purchase that includes a 10-day acceptance clause. On the fifth day before the offer is accepted, the buyer notifies the broker that she is withdrawing the offer and demands the return of her earnest money deposit. In the situation, the, the withdrawing in, in, in the situation in this situation, the withdrawing the offer. Okay. What am I missing? The buyer notifies the broker that she is withdrawing the offer and demands return of her earnest money deposit. In this situation, the um, C buyer has right to revoke the offer at any time until it is accepted and recover the earnest money. But I put a question and then mark. Oh, we got a question mark at A. Uh-huh. Because so we, we talked about it. Uh, you've got to have cola. We're drinking our cola. Mm -hmm. Consideration, mm -hmm. offer, legals, and mm -hmm. acceptance. Mm -hmm. If it's not been accepted, do we have a off? Do we have a contract? No. 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 That's what happened here. Okay. They did not have it accepted yet, and the buyer can withdraw their offer any time up until acceptance okay. same thing going back with the counter you send the counter back to the buyer and the buyers thinking about it another offer comes along the seller can say no okay we're canceling our counter we like this one better okay acceptance no contract until it is accepted At the time a buyer was negotiating the purchase of a lot on which to build a new home, the seller represented the soil represented that the soil was firm enough to support construction on a building when in fact he knew it was not. Ooh. He knew. He knew it was not. He knew. This and he made a right. statement and then yeah, it sounds like they relied on it and they were yeah. damaged. So this statement that he made is voidable by the buyer because of fraud. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We had our elements there. We got it right there. Mm -hmm. All three of them. Okay. Oh. The legal, what is it, the legal age of competency to enter into a contract in Alabama is 19. And we've got a caveat on there. Mayor. Or 18, 18 and married. Mary. And then they put in there in a sound mind. <laughs> and 18 and married. Too much responsibility for somebody to be 18 years old. You're married and you got to have good sense. Yeah. Plus, I'm at a 19, but you got to be 21 in order to buy a little. Really seriously. Tis, tis, tis. Alabama. When I was 18, you could buy liquor. Oh, really? Sure mm -hmm. could. They've changed it since then. There's a lot of stuff being changed. Yeah. Well, they changed it on my age because of the war. Yeah, so well, if you're old enough to go over there and get killed, yeah, you're you old enough to try it. And so they okay. Mm -hmm. It's like do I have any of it? And yeah, sixteen year old. Some uh, states have, to have a, a graduated license to where you can only like drive during the day yes. for a certain period of time. Mm -hmm. No other passengers in the mm -hmm. car. Mm -hmm. uh, then you get in Alabama too. Proven. One thirty-three. Which type of listing? contract provides for payment of a commission to the broker even though the owner makes the sale without the broker's aid um, exclusive right to sell correct exclusive right to sell no matter who sells it you get paid why would they have been exclusive agency list exclusive agency excludes the seller okay. he can sell it on his own with out paying a commission. That's why you really don't want one of those. Because mm -hmm. you're you're in competition with the seller.
The licensee is planning to buy a listed property for the licensee's own personal portfolio. In this situation, the licensee must make written disclosure of the license status to all parties in the transaction. Mm -hmm. Make written uh, disclosures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, disclosure is a big thing in this business. You can, you can do a lot of things if you just it's disclose it. Kind of remind me of working for the federal government. You disclose everything. <laughs> yeah. Documenting, mm -hmm. disclose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Let's do a few more and then we're going to spend a little time on agency. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which of the following listing agreement permits owners of a listed property to sell the property on their own without having to pay the listing broker a commission? Uh, let me see. We had we we had a question mark at D, but the answer said open listing and exclusive agency listing. Yeah, so which of the it permits the owner of the property to do it without paying a commission? Well, there are two two ways they could do that. Mm -hmm. The exclusive agency we just talked about, mm -hmm. and there's another one called open listing. Mm -hmm. Open listing is like for sale by owner, agents welcome. Mm -hmm. He's not going to ask for that there either. Uh, copies of signed contracts must be provided to client and customers. Copies of signed contract must be provided to clients and customers within 48 hours at the time they are signed. As soon as uh, I'm gonna go with out of those answers. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes the the best answer may not be there, but out of what they gave you, <laughs> yeah, which is the best one, right? And this one, I don't particularly like that one because the rule says reasonable time, right. except for the listing agreement, which must be left with them at the time they signed it. This is saying all of them at the time they signed it. Not necessarily. You get it back to them at a reasonable time. This may be another one that's another state. But with us, it's reasonable time except for that listing agreement. Okay, so you, it, so it'd be, okay. So yeah, but I don't have that list, B is the best mm -hmm. answer. So that's why on some of the questions that they have on the test, in your mind you have all of these things listed in your head, but out of those things is it'll ask you have to determine which one's the best. Mm -hmm. There's some because in your mind it said no, this is the right one. But then you have to say, no, what they're asking me, which is the best. Mm -hmm. So you're not reading into it, but you know what the information is. Right. But you got to see which ones, and that, that can be difficult at times. Yeah, Ontario's done the test, and mm -hmm. she's yeah. seen how they word how it's worded it. Yeah. And it boils down to like this one. I don't like any of those answers. Mm -hmm. But out of the answers they gave me, that's the best one. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. That's great. I don't Thirty one. Uh okay. hey, hey, a buyer saw a house on March tenth. She makes a written offer on the property on March fifteenth. The offer was presented on March sixteenth and accepted by the seller on March eighteenth. When should the agent give the buyer a signed copy of the contract on the 18th when everything was signed? And that, that's what it sounds like. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, that sounds right to me because that's when it was signed. Mm -hmm. Accepted. Uh, who were they giving it to? Offer the buyer. Give the buyer a signed copy of the contract. And they're there immediately. It was done on the 18th. No reason for you to hold on to that. Get back to them. We've got an accepted two-sided deal now. But see, it was basically the way it's reading is like at every point. 
Mm -hmm. March 10th was when the house was shown. Mm -hmm. 15th was uh, an written offer, and then the offer was presented on the 16th. Mm -hmm. So, but okay, oh, so it had signed by both parties mm -hmm. on the 18th. So okay. that's when it's. That's when I believe we got the deal. Mm -hmm. All right, next one. The licensee represents the seller. The licensee receives a written offer that is 50% below the asking price. How should the agent respond? Did we just have this one? Mm -hmm. no. no, we didn't. Um, promptly present the offer to the seller. Mm -hmm. okay. Promptly. Promptly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Laura makes an offer on a house and the seller accepts the offer. At this point, Laura has what type of title to the property? And um, I got L, equitable. Equitable. E equitable. E you have now an equitable interest in that property because you've got a contract on it that they can't do anything to that title until we deal with this. Whether the contract falls apart from financing or inspection but until we have a release of rights you've got an equitable interest in that property so what would be the difference between legal and equitable since legal was an option no, legal legal would be you've got title okay you don't have a title yet mm -hmm. okay okay you've got equitable mm -hmm. and you can't do anything the other person can't like you've got a contract on it so uh -huh. you've got equitable title equitable interest in that property that they can't sell to somebody else without dealing with you first. Yeah? Oh, okay. okay. Alright, let's um, wrap contracts up here and spend the next 20 minutes on um, agency. And what I'd like to do with that is let y'all play a little bit. We've got our characters that we've all seen what they do. So, I'd like for each of you to pick out a character that you want to tell us what their role is in agency. Oh! <laughs> well, ba basically, you know, um, let's just start out with um, some, somebody's got some... Um, um, I'm looking at my work in here. this way and turn this off. Now do the same thing. Alright, let's move our folks in here. And if somebody would like to start us off as Dorothy and tell us what her role is in this, and then somebody else talk about his role, and then his role and what they need to be doing. <laughs> okay. You go first. All right, I'm gonna let you have the floor. You go up there and talk to us. Tell us, tell us about Dorothy. <laughs> You're in charge. Well, she don't really have a role. Okay. Well, she, I mean, she's a customer. You just met her. So, what, what's your relationship with her right now? None. None. None agency. Um, until she decides she wants to look at this house. Okay. And well, until I decide I want to look at this house. <laughs> Then I've got to. All right, let, yeah, let, let's let's be clear here. You are Dorothy. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you want from these people? You I want the, you want them to answer your question. You want just you want these things. Mm -hmm. I need an agent to okay. um, assist me in purchasing a home. Okay. So I need to find 
A license? A licensee, uh huh. Yeah. Oh, oh scarecrow a license? license? Right. <laughs> so, uh, but I thought I signed with. Oh, yes, scarecrow. Okay. okay. Um, so I would need someone to. Um, well, I, I, I just gotta go find an agent. You gotta find an agent. Right. So, well, what, what do you want them to do for you? I want them to be loyal. Okay. Obedient. Okay. Honest. Honest. Um, and reasonable care of my concerns. Okay, so. And. Okay, well, that, that's what you want. That, you're Dorothy, that's what you want. Mm -hmm. You want them to treat you right, mm -hmm. answer your questions, but you want more than that. You want them to be obedient, loyal, and keep things in confidence. So you want a higher level than just a transaction broker. Right. So that's what you've got right now when you just walked up. Mm -hmm. So if you want to talk to Scarecrow and say, here's what I want, can you help me? Right? Right. All right, you, you can come on back. Thank you so much. Let's yeah. give her a hand. That's yeah. a lot of guts to get up there. Yes. Who wants to be Scarecrow? I'll look. You go ahead. <laughs> you want Okay. Uh, Tara, thank you. I'm going to try it. Okay. okay. So, I'm Scarecrow to Dorothy. Um, Dorothy's looking for an agent, and that is, I am a single agent to Dorothy, providing her with. You didn't uh, start out that way. You no, met I started, Dorothy. I, I met and, Dorothy and I was a transaction broker. And how did you, what did you first do, give her? Um, I actually gave her, um, I didn't give her any advice. Mm -hmm. I gave oh, her R. So um, R. reasonable care. Mm -hmm. The other R. Oh, really? Oh, Dorothy. <laughs> oh, Dorothy. <laughs> Got a violation already. <laughs> so, so, so you're still transactional until you do that. You work yes. for the seller. Yes. Until you do That's that. That's why I want to be scared Okay. So, uh, I recad Dorothy. Uh huh. And recadding Dorothy, I wanted to know which one could I represent her as? A single agent, um, a limited consensual dual agent, or a transaction broker? Mm -hmm. So, I remember her saying she wanted loyalty. So what so, have you got to do now? If she wants loyalty, I have to be a single agent. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so being a single agent for her, I offer, ask her to sign this after reviewing it with her. But if she doesn't, I have to sign that. Okay. Yes. But providing single agency for her, uh. I'm going to give her the hard questions. Did she you got, what have you got to do to create that agency? Because that's what she wants. I have to... Um, agency can only be created with, with agreement. agreement. Mm -hmm. so, so if she doesn't gonna, sign if she, if, she, if she doesn't sign this, you gonna stay the transaction broker and work trans for the seller, right? Mm -hmm. But she wants agents, so, so you she's gonna sign that. that. So she'll sign the buyer agency yes. agreement. She gonna sign the buyer agency and when agreement. When she signs the buyer agency agreement, then I can give her advice. Yes, and salute her. Yeah, and salute her. And salute her <laughs> for the term confidence, obedience, and loyalty are the other three that's added to the her questions. Okay. Okay. Now let's just say you've created this, you found the house, you wrote an offer on it. What else did you have to do at that point? I found the house and I wrote an offer on it. It wasn't so one that, of our listings, it's just another listing. So that has to go back to um, the seller? Submit it immediately? The, es oh, the, the estimated closing. Yes, that's what you've got to do Thing next. Has to go to the buyer. So it has to go back to um, 
No. Mm -hmm. It just goes in the file. Just, it has to go in the file for Dorothy mm -hmm. by me being her buyer agency. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's right. Okay. Okay. Now we got another little problem here. She wants to see our listing. So what do we need to do? We got to go from she wants single to see, agency to, to yes. consensual dual agency. So if we go to limited consensual dual agency, I'm limited on the information that I can provide for Dorothy mm -hmm. and the other party. Mm -hmm. Yes, can't hurt either one. Can't hurt either one. Now, since this is our listing too, are we going to have to do a net sheet there? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so yes. Both, both parties now. So the listing will have one and the buyer mm -hmm. will have a estimated closing statement. Okay. Okay. All right, anything you want to ask her? She got it. She did good. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. because I got it wrote down, but sometimes it's hard to put that in place. Okay. Transaction broken is easy. Good job. Thank you. All right. Who wants to be <laughs> Tin Man? Nobody. <laughs> tin Man's the listing agent. How are we going? Who wants, who wants to tell us about Tin Man? No? No, <laughs> no. Oh, well, what's she waiting on? <laughs> well, she had all the answers early. She had every answer. And she got them there. I'm trying to wait on them. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Okay, it's good. I have more pressure. Yeah, it's, you, more pressure the better. <laughs> Thank you. It's that long stuff that I'm going to have. Okay, as the listing agent, uh huh. Um. I've chosen Scarecrow Agency to list my house, and he has informed me that there's a um, buyer that's wanting to look at my house. Okay. So I've got to sign the dual limited consensual dual agency with him. Mm -hmm. um, I've got to sign a listing agreement with him first to put the property. Yes. As property to be listed and then sign the list the, the dual limited dual agency form with him um and at some point during the transaction he's scarecrow is going to give me a net sheet yes and Dorothy and I we're gonna um come to an agreement on our um contract okay. and then she will be the proud owner of a brand new home brand new home what about the offer Oh, Scarecrow is going to give me um, her offer, and I'm mm -hmm. going to look over it. Um, create the next sheet. And, yeah, create the next sheet. Mm -hmm. For her. For her. her. Oh, it's for her. Yeah, mm -hmm. Scarecrow's her agent. Tin no. Man is a seller's agent. But we're not going to get one. Both of them. Okay, that's what I was going Tin Man's going to have to do one for the seller. Because that's his client. You mean Scarecrow? <laughs> Scarecrow's working with Dorothy. Scarecrow is Dorothy's agent. Tin He's Man's got to do one for seller. her. Yeah. Yeah, Tin Man works as a seller. He's got the listing, so uh -huh. he's got to do the Found estimated. The over that oh, okay. uh -huh. See, I thought Tin Man actually was the seller. So, okay. He's representing the seller. He's representing the seller. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so then. Tin Man would, we would do the net sheet. She would look at the contract to see if it's what she, um, mm -hmm. if she agrees with the contract and if she accepts, she signs and send it back to the seller. Yeah, to the, to the seller. And then if I agree with it, I'll sign. And would, then we go to closing. Would the listing be filled? Would the listing, no, it would have a date an expiration date on it. Okay. That will determine how long it's going to be listed for. Mm -hmm. Right. Can it automatically renew? Can I automatically renew? See how this works, Joe's 
So yeah, how it works. But when you get up there, it's a whole other world. That's why I ain't going up there. <laughs> Yeah, the course, the course. Back, the back here. <laughs> I got this. It's that law. I got about, this part. About three or four months now, y'all gonna be standing there with a buyer, okay. and you'll be under this pressure. Oh, wow. And you've got to know, I've got to do these things for you. I've got to create a net sheet. I want a buyer's agency with you. And that's why I lose it with the net sheet. I don't remember. <laughs> that I need to give the net sheet. I, I forget about that part. No. I also thought about something else. Um, um, Tin Man owes his seller the hard, do he owe them the hard course? Absolutely. And the colonel, the colonel. The, right. mm -hmm. the colonel's where we're going to limit our agency. Our, when we go into dual agency, mm -hmm. we limit some of that. Um, we can't tell Tin Man that Dorothy's got a four hundred thousand dollar insurance check in her box, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And we can't tell Dorothy that Tin Man's already three months. I mean, Tin Man's seller is three months behind his payments. The bank's been there twice, and one more month they're taking his house. Mm -hmm. Either one of those would benefit from that knowledge or be hurt by it. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of stuff we gotta keep, keep separated. And advice? Now she's gonna say, well, what do you think I should offer on this? You're my agent. Well, what you're gonna do is say, okay, here is what is sold around here. Here's what the market value is on this house. Here's what they're asking. What would you like to offer? So you kept, you kept the advice neutral. Yeah, you, you know, here's facts these are facts here is what is sold around here like this one mm -hmm. recently and then that puts it that gives her that the knowledge yes the knowledge and she has to make the decision she, on what she exactly. wants she's making the decision offer. based on you you're not advising her on what to offer you're just giving her the facts mm -hmm. same thing the house set it for what is it a price on the house uh I, yeah, I told you, I just pulled a little list and put it up there. How much is it? Listing price, 99900 Okay. Original okay. price was 119900 Okay, 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 okay. Which, well, that would tell her something right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's dropped the price $20,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it got it. So it, apparently, if it, it dropping it like that, Normally, when they drop it like that, it been on the market for so long. Yeah, the price was the problem there. Uh huh. So uh, and, and then they probably that probably the neighborhood could be a lot of things. It might be the neighbor houses unkept, and that's going to bring that value down. Thank you. <laughs> They're going to bring that value down. So it just all depends on why he dropped the price. Yeah. But when she look at that and, and drop the price, then she still got a, a opportunity. That might be still too much for her. So she can go in with her own price at nine times out of ten with him knowing his circumstances. Mm -hmm. He's gonna be at, glad to get in and say he can. <laughs> Could be. Because we know he's three months behind the exactly. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Dropped the price twenty thousand oh, dollars. If she yeah. had those two pieces of information, mm -hmm. her offer is gonna be way less. Yeah, but see if if the if the price now when she asks uh the scarecrow over here how much the house was and then he gonna tell her well it's such and such it was this well if it was dropped aren't you gonna tell her that it was dropped yeah that's public knowledge exactly so you, you, yeah. you're gonna have you're gonna have to tell so I, it don't take a rocket scientist yeah. Ooh, we down twenty thousand dollars on this price yes that's significant yes so if it's 99 okay tell you what i'm gonna do here I'll offer you eight or five thousand. Good, yeah. <laughs> and he may take it. Oh, he gonna take it. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> now see, she gonna be good in this video. <laughs> yeah. Do it. And I'm that Do person. Rest. I'm right down the end. I'm not afraid of anything. <laughs> I've already told people I'm in real estate. I don't have to wear a tag. <coughs> I got a good mouthpiece.
<laughs> now, good. Now, what what I now, see, y'all got a little taste of standing up and speaking. Oh, and yeah. That's scary. I'm not afraid of anything, and I will say what needs to be said to get my job done. <laughs> and I'll let that girl know because I know she got more <laughs> You got a $400 check in the $400,000 in that Yes. <laughs> She doesn't know it's fine. She's just waiting to find a home. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, did y'all get anything out of tonight? Yes. Yes, I had fun. Yeah. That's what I like. I want some fun. <laughs> well, we, we can't just have class and lecture all the time. Uh, yeah, that, that should stick a little bit more now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah. you, when you participate, you yes, learn they were fun. Yeah, fun. And then getting up here in front, it um, really. They said, uh, I think it was Jerry Seinfeld that said, uh -oh. um, "People are more afraid of speaking in public than they are of dying." Ooh, that's really so. At a funeral, are you better off to be in the casket or giving the eulogy? I want to give the eulogy. I was giving the eulogy. Wow, well, you got to get up here and. And speak one time, and y'all did that just now. You got up here, y'all on the internet now. Oh, 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 oh